Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Two Friends Eat Podcast. We are here to talk about restaurants, recipes, and food news. My name is Giuseppe, and here with my co-host, Peter. Yes, it's me, the one who doesn't like sardines because they're a crime against humanity. <laughs> I'm coming in hot. We're coming in. We're coming. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that. Either way, we're here. We're ready to talk about food stuff. It's been a while since the last recording. Um, Emphasis on a while. A lot, yeah. You been. know, life stuff. Yeah. You eat too many sardines, it prevents the whole filming. But look. Okay. For every can of Moxie, we couldn't record for like a week. That was the punishment? <laughs> no. That's why? No, that wasn't the punishment. Okay. That, was, that was just actually what happened. It's retribution? Yeah. Yeah, something, right. something like that. Look, we're going to get, get started. We're going to talk about local news stuff. We'll keep it simple. But actually, before we get to the news, it's been a while, so what have you been up to? You know, just playing video games still, to be completely honest. What are you playing now? Uh, I'm getting real pissed off playing Elden Ring. <laughs> As you saw when you came over here earlier, I was in the middle of playing it, and you couldn't, I couldn't come help you grab everything in the car because you can't pause those games. No, that's fine. Um, it wasn't a lot of stuff. We got a little bit of an upgraded setup here. You guys don't see it in the back end, but it's much better now. It is, yeah. it is. I'm going to be going to Japan in September, oh, that's so hopefully cool. by the time the episode around after that, probably around October... November-ish. I'll have a lot of pictures for that and a lot of yeah. things to go over there. Authentic takes on a bunch of different foods. So I'm going right. to go to like a Kirby cafe. I'm going to try like, uh, there's too many things to list at that point. I'll, well, I'll have a more conglomerate list with everything there. Yeah. Well, we recently have been going to a lot of places together to try some different foods. So I took you to a place in Andover, Massachusetts. It was It's called Akita Ramen. What'd you think? Do you remember how, how good it was? Oh, uh, the ramen was delicious. Uh, the only thing I know is mixing up its name with probably an anime character, which is fitting because they I think they were playing some anime in the background or anime music. Yeah. They were definitely playing anime music. So yeah. the decorating in the restaurant is really nice. It's it's definitely, you know, got that like like you said, anime vibe and stuff. So you and I both got a bowl. Well it had of a mix ramen. of that and then it had like a mixture of attempting to be like kinda like a street cart. Yeah. Some of like the paper lanterns and stuff, so I thought that was cool. The murals on the wall and all that nice atmosphere. What we also got for the dessert, bean paste. The little bean paste fried fish. Oh, the the, the uh I just had the names of these the other day. Let me <laughs> I have up. I have to look at it because it, there's a specific name for these. Mm -hmm. And, and I we had it with the side of the, the green day. tea, the matcha green tea ice cream. It was so good. Oh it's yeah. It's the it first delicious. time I ever had it and I it was awesome. I've seen it on, on different anime shows too. And like it was awesome being able to actually taste it and eat it for the first time. Taiyaki. Yeah. Taiyaki is the name of it. Yep. It can have cheese, it can have uh, bean paste, it yep. can have uh, other things. I think it'd have ice cream in it at times if you want it cold. It's kind of like a, a multi tool. Mm -hmm. And then for the appetizer, we had the little uh, octopus. Dude, takoyaki. The See, takoyaki. I know that one. Yeah, we got the takoyaki. I can't stay away from takoyaki. So, yeah, if you guys like really good ramen and you want to go to a place that's very good, it's not too pricey, honestly, for the quality of food. Like, Akita Ramen Andover was really good. Well, I'd say more importantly, what we did do is, for your birthday, we went over to Kisaki yes! in Manchester, and that was a lot of fun. We yep. took, took oh, charge of you the, all eat. the ordering. I uh, went back there like uh, more recently, a couple weeks ago at this point, with my one of my friends, two of my friends that I'm going to Japan with, and we basically inducted him in trying sushi for the first time. Yeah. So me and my buddy Adamar, we just... Went nuts? We went nuts. We didn't go nuts. We went safely nuts. We ordered everything. We like did it by stages and stuff like that. We'd ordered sashimi, got him all his safe picks, let him have like a good variety. Unfortunately, his stomach wasn't as big as ours, but we... Uh, <laughs> you made up for it. You made sure you got more than your money's worth. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, no, I, I had a lot of fun with this sashimi this time around. Yeah. So we were having good good fun just ordering just the, the fish itself oh. and trying that separate there. I still I, th I have to say, I think I think the white tuna and the regular tuna might be more of my favorite, just the way it just melts. The fatty tuna, tuna is so good. The crab was also really good, but... Everything there uh, is great. And again... One flat rate, you eat all you can eat, and it's not just sushi, you also get like regular hibachi stuff too. You can get like rice, you can yeah, get Yeah, we ordered like a lot of dumplings, yep. um, like you can get their Japanese, their ver like katsu version of like chicken tenders and things like that. Um, I ordered lots of takoyaki, can't not do that. No. And um, then we did end with ice cream, we got regular ice cream. Well, we their, their takoyaki the regular wasn't ice cream was as good though. I thought that the takoyaki over at Akita Ramen was better. 
Yeah, it's the been a while. On there was a, there was a place down in Peabody. Oh, Mass Bushido, that I tried. Bushido, what do you call the little like fish, the dried fish that moves from the temp? I have no idea. Bonito flakes. That one had bonito flakes. Was the one up in uh, yeah. in the well? There's the like made a little it. fast. I mean, they're small. They're, they're great. Great. Boom, 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 done. So they weren't order, bad. So I can order like six of them and no regrets. Yeah, yeah. But they were. Yeah, you were it's right. Good they were still very good. No, we definitely ate more than probably like two hundred dollars for you. It's like thirty seven dollars, like if you go on a regular day for like dinner or like the weekend. But if you really can compare that to even like the, I would say the bottom of the barrel, not market basket, but it like just broad across the board, uh, grocery store sushi. Yeah, you're paying like thirteen ninety nine for the super basic styled like rolls. Like nothing fancy, and then the most you get is like thirteen, fourteen, sixteen dollars. No, you're talking about like gas station sushi. No, you don't try that. I'm like, <laughs> I don't think I've ever. Have you ever had gas? Station? I don't think I've never had gas station sushi, but I don't think I've even seen gas station sushi because I don't. My brain's already wired to ignore something that might cause significant pain and harm <laughs> to my body. That's why when I look at the vending machine at work and I see Moxie, I don't even acknowledge it. Look, you know what's man. great though? You know, yo, the man no, replaced no, it all with Mountain no, Dew. Look, and we're look, having a look, grand time. I do not understand. Look, that is what. Where's the justice? There, there was eight rows of moxie. Everybody lost their damn minds. But if they have, like, no kidding, 18 rows of Mountain Dew. There's not 18 It, rows. it was 18 no, rows. Just 18. because they're different flavors doesn't mean it's not Mountain Dew. All right? Yeah, but that's exactly why there's so many rows. No. Oh, Everybody buys no, Mountain Dew. No, they've been sitting there forever. I've seen, Where's the moxie goes like that? Mo because there's one row, and that's it. It's whatever. The only crime against <laughs> it there is the fact that he's putting in the newer flavors of Baja Blast. And I don't know if you've, like, sidetrack over to the drink section now off of food. They've been making way too many flavors of Baja Blast. There's, like, one or two spin-off flavors of Baja Blast. Like, we could probably do a whole soda venture at yeah. some point. But like buy one of each from the vendor. Not, not even buy we'll show one. Show up with fifteen different bottles of fucking Mountain Dew right here in front of us. I don't know if we really need to like try them all. Like I can tell you right now off of personal experience, they're not that different or not that good. Not I don't, even the mango keep, one. I was kind of like tempted with the mango. Well, it's like good. They're, they're okay. This is the thing. It's like they're just putting Baja on the name just to get it to be like um to bring in the people who want Baja Blast and view it so highly. Yeah, marketing. And it's like. It's not the same thing as what they're doing with like the regular flavors of Mountain Dew. Like if I go in there and I get a Mountain Dew, I see Mountain Dew Zero now, which is a nice option because I don't want to have seventy nine grams of sugar in one bottle. It's an overexposure of the brand, and not only that, they're flooding the market with too many options, and you're going to end up people who's going to end up having decision paralysis. Yeah, and so they're going to end up getting nothing. I mean, they usually only put like a couple flavors of it at a time. So it's really not too no, bad. No, he went nuts and got every every flavor. No, he only has every he flavor. only has two Baja flavors, and then he has three, four. I'm Mountain taking Dew, a right? picture. Four, and I'm bringing it. You in don't need for a the picture of that. I am There's, I know picture. exactly what's in I there. Have... It's the Laguna Lemonade. It's the Tropical Punch. Those are the two. They're the cans. He has the regular in a can, and then he has the regular in a bottle. He, he has, has voltage mango. in the bottle. No, it's not mango. It's Live Wire. They have names. Get them right. I'm and then there. he has Code Red. Okay, Code Red's the only one I used to drink a lot. Did you not drink Voltage? That was like a sour slushy. So good. I did. But Major I liked, Melon, if you haven't had that, it's really good too. I liked the red, Code Red, because it tasted like a Shirley Temple. You probably just... It doesn't taste like that at all. Yes, it does. You probably just bought it because it had Master Chief on it back no, in the day. No, I don't even play... I am a Nintendo fanboy. I only own Nintendo since I have every system, except for the Virtual Boy. That was trash. But we I have got a every fake gamer Nintendo over here. system. Yeah, I'm a vintage gamer, right? No, that's not, that's, not even, that's not even vintage. But that's just, if you were vintage, you'd have like... Atari 2600? Yeah, you'd probably I have... I own one. You'd probably have E.T. Oh, too. No. <laughs> you want to get one for free? Let's go over to Arizona. It was in New Mexico. Jeez. That's so far. It is a... Why is it over there? Oh, because that's where they show. buried them all? <laughs> the well, I want them to work. I'll probably just play it one way or another. I yeah. can figure it out. I, yeah. know, I have connections. There's, there's ways. We, right now, we're enjoying talking about drinks... It's really good sour. For those who are up. 21 and up. Yes, please. No underage drinking. <laughs> we have um, this awesome sour. I'm a sour beer kind of guy. What kind of sour? What kind of beers are you into? Like, what's your favorite kind of beer? I would say sour is really? actually my favorite. Uh, oh, that's anything, awesome, dude. Anything sour candy. I found as I've the past few years, 
I've gained tummy issues with beer. IPAs and stuff. I never liked IPAs. I, when everyone was talking about IPAs. Some of them were pretty good, but the problem is like it, it you drink I drink just a little bit of some of them now and it just makes my stomach upset. But what I can drink is shit beer. A natty ice. Hey, you a know what? Stole light. You know what? It's you know what's great about all that though? And that, it, like, that's it, that's it, beer that's beer pong beer. Yeah, I know I know it, I know it's it, I know cry. it's for fraternities, okay? But it's so cheap. It is. It's so cheap. It's 30 rack for 10 bucks. Yeah. I'm good for like a couple days, like not a couple days in a row, but like a couple days of playing games and doing whatever, you know? But I just, with IPAs, too many of them are grapefruit forward. It's very grapefruity and I'm not a fan of grapefruit flavored beer. Yeah. You know, and people are like, oh, well, that's the hops. So there's different kind of hops and stuff. Well, well I, I don't like hop it is, yeah. I don't but know. Grapefruit's not really that good. Sours are great. They're fruity. You feel it a bit in the back of your throat. The lighter for me, they taste almost like alcoholic, you know, kombucha, and I love kombucha. They do have alcoholic kombucha. There's well, a there's a brewery called Auspicious Brew. Yeah, that are local that does alcoholic kombucha. You can get it off of um, if you go down to Nashua off of Spitbrook Road. I think it's just called the Beer Store. Mm -hmm. It's in that pl it's in a plaza off of there where there's and it's called Auspicious Brew. Yeah, yeah. It's the only like uh, you could probably get it closer for they had like a a t taste testing thing. That's okay. why. I, I was able to taste like and it legitimately flavors. tastes like kombucha, but it's, with a no, high no, it's alcohol. Hard, it's hard kombucha. It's hard kombucha because like, kombucha like, naturally has yeah. alcohol in it, but such a low level. It's like four and a half or five percent. So okay. it's, it's about the it's about the strength of a normal beer in terms of that. So you're not like I mean, obviously at the same point, you probably shouldn't drink like a million of them because then you'll just end up somewhere else. You don't. You'll be on the toilet just in a different end than you're used to from drinking too much. Well, it's good probiotics <laughs> from what I hear. Dude, this is really good. <laughs> Have you this ever been really, to Pipe really Dream good. Brewery? No, I, um, over in no, Lemonary I, over there. No, I, oh, well, maybe I have. They've got a bunch of really good sours over there. There's like a, they have like a Starburst one with the can looks like that, and it has a different name entirely, obviously because of uh, legal legalities. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There's no licensing agreement. That's I think it's word. called Basic. That's <laughs> well, let me go grab another sure. drink, and today. Let's move on to the next segment called Pete's Eats. It's arguably the best part of the show. Usually, <laughs> for you, where you get to try something you haven't tried before. For free. You're welcome. So, something that I was surprised to know is being someone from New England, and even in this close area, we're near the North Shore. Yeah. There's something called North Shore beef. It's a type of sandwich. It's a roast beef sandwich. Usually on a grilled, buttered, onion, bulky roll. And you have American cheese on both sides, whipped mayo on top, and then you drizzle, I think it's called James River Barbecue on it. Mm. And it's really, really good. Intriguing. Some people, they say that, you know, you have to get it at a certain place. Other places don't know. I've never had it from the common man roadside, so I wanted to give them a shot. They said it was a new item on there. I could already tell you, I took a peek. They sliced their roast beef way too thick. It's supposed to be razor thin, so that's almost like transparent. It and always you layer it high, thin. but huh? It depends on what you're using it for. It's still roast that's, beef. That's the way you have it for this sandwich. All right. I know there's a few people that might be listening that's from like the North Shore Peabody area, and they they are very strict. They have their own Facebook group called North Shore Beefs. They're they're vicious, man. They're well, yeah, rough. if you're going to put beef in the name of something, you got to be ready to start it, end it, be in the middle of it. Well, I am done with my first drink. I'm going to go grab one. So while I do that, grab both. Of get them. your drink. Well, you still have some, don't you? Not that much. All right. Well, we're going to take a quick little break and we're going to get another drink. All right, we're back. We're ready to go. So we got the roast beefs. Pete's got the drinks. I've acquired them back again. Cool. Let me hand you one of these babies. As awesome as this is, I'm gonna save it for later. Cause that came if prepared. you pull out, oh my god! I'm having a moxie with my roast beef. Okay, that's that's part of the deal. They go together, like you know. No, like no, the no nothing, the nothing goes with that. Yeah, it does. That, this is amazing. I bet that would taste really good on a gyro. I almost got us euros. But they weren't open by the time I drove by. I actually was going to get us some euros, but then I got this instead. Well, as long as that's the only bottle of shit we have here, I'm fine. <laughs> it's also a twist off. Look at that. Yeah, because they know that they want an easy access for you to be able to dump it out. <laughs> you know what? If this was my house, I would have. I was going to crack that bottle straight on the floor and clean it up myself because we don't leave shit 
line there. Dude, you know what's crazy? Nothing. This tastes way better than the cans. Oh, well, yeah. I think this uses real sugar. This isn't like the ones where they use like, yeah, wow, this one tastes way, t to have a taste. Just a sip. Wait, first made though. Made pure for, cane first sugar. Though, this is not an endorsement by you. The bottle, bottled soda, like if you're going tiers of soda, it's always the darker bottles and then the can and then the liter. Or two liter, whatever, mm -hmm. because the, it's. I think there's something it has to do with like the darker style bottle that actually keeps the flavor. Like does some, it does something to the flavor. If I remember correctly, I read something about this earlier. Plus, it's made with pure cane sugar, not syrup. Just a sip. It is different than the can, and it's not as as moxie ish. Wait, you going for a second sip? It still tastes like shit. I can't <laughs> confirm. But the, but the good part about it. The, all of the 0.5 seconds, the 0.25 seconds before it tastes like shit forever in your mouth was a was definitely a lot better. So if you had gun to your head, if you had to drink it, you'll say hand me the bottle, not the can. Well, I mean, if I have a gun <laughs> in my head and I have to drink it, obviously I'm going to drink it anyway because I'm <laughs> I'm not going to die. I wish I was, but that's a whole different thing. Well, here we go. We got the roast beef. As you can tell, the way that they make these is they grill the buns. All right. They toast, they're supposed to toast and butter it. Little light on the mayo for this one. We'll give you a sauce um, there. Cheese is not melted, so that means the beef was served cold. And usually, before you take a bite, you drizzle. It's literally like a mountain of just barbecue sauce coming out from the sides of this thing. And I had them give me extra on the side here. A whole mess of barbecue sauce, just like. All right, okay. well, we should've got napkins. Napkins are no. for the week. No, you need, they're not for the week. <laughs> They're for the cleanly. <laughs> this is coming from the man who brought a bottle of Moxie into this. Okay, here you go. We're All sponsored right. by Paper Towels. All right. You'll never know the brand because it doesn't tell you anything. So my favorite place for roast beef is this new place in Andover called Patrick's uh, North Shore Eatery. I feel like anytime I hear an Irish location. style name, that's the only way I accept roast beef. It's very, very good. I want to <laughs> take you there next time we go out to eat so you can try what a uh, real roast beef is because this... This ain't it. It's not bad. You need to go to Jamie's Roast Beef. Mm -mm. I might have changed the name, but I'm pretty sure it's still Jamie's and Peabody. This is, this is not a North Shore Beef. This is a sad imitation of one. I'm almost offended. Well, you went to Hooks It. This isn't even a Hooks It one. This is the one from the Manchester, right across from uh, the Chunkies. In the Irving Gas Station. This is Gas Station Roast Beef. No, no. Gas Station Roast Beef is worse. That's a different beast. I need to take you. To where they actually have North Shore roast beef. This is pathetic. This isn't bad, but this is not a North Shore beef. I feel like usually it's more shredded. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> like I say, it's paper thin. It's like I'm telling you, the Jamie's roast beef I had. Mm. I think it, I think it meets your requirement. Um, they, they almost don't put any mayo in out. this. Where's the mayo? Again, it's not bad. For a North Shore beef, it's trash. Mm-mm. You're gonna taste the difference. I'm gonna have. I'm taking you to Patrick's, and you're trying one. I mean, it's good. I'm glad you appreciate it, but you don't know what to compare it to. This is the first one. You know what this is like? It's like you telling me you've never had pasta, and I take you to the Olive Garden for your first pasta meal. And if it's your first meal, yeah, no, it's great. Oh, it's amazing. But then I take you to an actual Italian place. You're like, what the hell was I thinking? That's what's gonna happen. Watch. Even I know the difference with that one. I don't know if I can finish this. I'm disappointed, man. Did I they like say they were like, who, who gave you the recommendation? Oh, nobody recommended I go there. Did they say they were North Shore roast beef? It's called a three-way. That's the name of it, a three-way. Well, there was only two ways right there. In my hand and in my tummy. I'm gonna finish mine. If you want, yeah. while I'm finishing, you can go ahead and talk about the national. I'm going to go wash my hand because that second one poured so much barbecue. <laughs> the best part of this is me washing it down with the moxie. <clears throat> That's the worst part. The barbecue sauce is actually really good, though. It is. But then, you know, the beef just drags it down. It's cold. Well, roast beef usually is cold. Not a North Shore roast beef three way. The cheese should be melted. <clears throat> The way the, is that what you ordered? Any mail. Is that how yes, you ordered it? In a three-way. That's what a three-way is. 
This is the place you need to go to. Jamie's Roast Beef. Look at mm. that. Look at that. Yeah! Shredded, nice oh. and thin. They put like a truffle sauce on some of their stuff. It's so good. Fine, we'll go there first and then we'll go to Patrick's shop. Well, you can go there on your own there because I know you're usually down around, probably, you might be down around some of those areas yourself. It's a little far. As of late, now you bring out. Oh, I yeah. Looking at that, those are so much. Those are definitely thick slices. See, that's what I expect in, like, that's what I expect when I buy the deli meat and I bring that home and I put it on the sandwich. Yeah. Like you, but even that's actually, you know, a little thinner. You know how I do it? When I make a home roast beef, it's roast beef, red onions, tomatoes, salt and pepper. Oh, well, it's usually cold still for me. The sandwich. Yeah. I've always had them it's cold. cold. A slice of romaine lettuce. I've had lettuce in Mayo. Me. And usually on sourdough toasted bread. Mm -hmm. And it's awesome. I think I usually have it on like a uh, Italian sub roll. Those are good too. Yeah. That's Thankfully. You want fluffy. I like crunchy. My dad, no, no, my dad would still bake toast them. It. He would still toast them. Oh. oh, and the cheese I would use, Swiss. Mm -hmm. Not American. Yeah, yeah, No, no, no. You use your American. The only beef you usually use American for is for burgers. Some other things. But you save that for ground beef. That's the beef we got. Ground beef. Well, I also got this weird flavored. Is it really weird? I feel like that's. I've never had the queso flavor. Have you had the queso? Usually it's barbecue. Honey barbecue. The honey barbecue ones, my my buddy Joey would bring those in every day. My mom wouldn't get us for them, but he would have I them. So I would those. mooch off of his. A couple different pieces of them at a time. I think those are the best flavored Fritos. The, the honey barbecue. The twists. They oh, have a the chili OGs one. are still good, even yeah. though dog's feet smell like corn chips. It still tastes good. Nobody likes the chili ones. I didn't know they had chili ones. They're the ones that come inside of the multi-pack boxes. I don't buy the multi-pack boxes. Why not? You don't like variety in your life? I like variety, but I go all in. Go, I go big, then I go home. There's no choice. There's no option. You just buy one large bag of every. I just know want. what I'm doing. I don't know. A lot of times for snack flavors for things, it it really. There's like a couple different mood sets I go for, mm -hmm. and it depends on what I'm getting. But sometimes, either a regular flavor for like standard time, if I go chips, sometimes I just want salt and vinegar. I love salt and salt vinegar. Salt and vinegar are awesome. You either love them or you hate them. There's no in between. Yeah, if you hate them. Who do you think makes the best salt and like vinegar it. chips? It depends on how you want it. Because like, you can want like a kettle, like a kettle cooked chip at one point. What but brand? Then like, what brand? The Cape Cod one. Hell yeah. Did you do get actually the, the the pink one with the pink Himalayan salt and the red wine yeah. vinegar? That's for the uh, breast of fit awareness month. They only have that like once a month. The uh, wicked good. But they also like if you want it in the like you can. It's it's great because every chip basically does a salt and vinegar no, chip. So like they do. if you just want salt and vinegar, but you want to, you like a certain chip style, you have so many options. Honestly, most of the time I'm a slut for the regular Lay's ones because like they're just really small like easy to crunch through and not like i don't know there's something about it but like i'd say probably my least favorite salt and vinegar chip probably has to be Uts. no no that's is still pretty decent it's pringles? pringles i don't really like the pringles chip in that style i like it for other things the pizza one's good the pizza one's good yeah and like regular sour cream all that stuff for some reason i mean salt and vinegar one is good yeah you're so right. i'm not saying it's bad no, I agree. it's out of like, all of them it's the the lowest it's, it's, bottom tier. it's kind of like my least favorite chip if we do like a tier list, it's definitely D tier. You know what it is pretty good that it was? The uh, Goldfish has made new ones where it's puffed. I have to try them. And they make different flavor ones and they have a salt and vinegar one and it's like nice and airy. That is a good barbecue. Where it's not like, like it's not too, it's not like super solid like a regular Goldfish. So you kind of crunch in and go push. <laughs> it doesn't make that noise. But are they, are, they, are they like the 3D Dorito chips? You remember those? Well, I don't know if you know this, but Goldfish are already 3D. It's the Moxie. It's already bringing the IQ down. Lower than we thought as he takes a Mick thought. Soon. Mick thought. The only thing I have for a Mick thought was I don't know if you saw it. Are for you. We can have them later. I don't know if you saw it at all, but they had a McDonald's had another sauce. I, I won't say craze, but like a good sauce pick. A sauce renaissance. Yeah, I'm a kinda, renaissance. I, if you, will. I'm kind of skipping around here. We're, we're, we can. Do we want to get back to that later? Or do we want to continue with the? No, the, let us let's let the flow go. Let the flow go. Because um, well, you know how everything's going these days. Everyone's hopping on the anime hype train because yes. now it's mainstream. So yeah. people like me back in high school who were embarrassed to tell anyone that I watched any sort of anime don't have to say that now. But they made like a an isekai 
McDonald's manga really fast, and they had a new sauce called their, like, McDonald's sauce. Yeah. The sauce itself was pretty good. It wasn't as crazy sold out as the last time when they brought back the Szechuan sauce because mm. of all those brain-dead Rick and Morty fans. Uh, I'm not going to say sorry. Most of you are brain-dead. Yeah. Um, Everyone the show's stop. funny, but I don't want to watch anymore because of you. A, a lot of fandoms ruin the source material. And then when the source material, when the, the show acknowledges them and just feeds into it, it's even worse. Yeah. Like, still funny show. High said, to popularity, you guys are still really stupid fans. I'm sorry. It doesn't make you any smarter because you're watching that. Now, Futurama, that show makes you smart. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. If you no, want to get some of the jokes, you have it to It fries your learn. brain. Futurama? You're not getting the joke. Oh, fry. Looks like it doesn't make you smarter, considering I watched it and I even knew that joke. Blame it on the moxie. No, it's not just the moxie. The moxie's just a contributing factor to a impending doom that we're just waiting to see afflict in the future. Listen, man, I know I'm old. You don't have to rub it. I'm going to call you Lemony Snicket because this is a series <laughs> of unfortunate events for you. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, you did. Um... But yeah, so they had that new they had that new sauce, and it was kind of cool to see them dig into the anime side. The last time they had a uh, more viral type thing go through, I guess this wasn't as viral, but the viral thing was when they had some of the newer McDonald's commercials from Japan. Well, didn't they have like a, a K-pop band do like their own spin of like a Happy Meal or like a, I don't a special so. meal? I don't know. I, they I, had I, a they had Hello Kitty stuff mixed with Yu Gi Oh. I remember that, but that was like only in certain places. For a while, I don't think I ever hit here, which just makes no sense. Of course, I want Karomi mixed with like the Blue Eyes White Dragon. Someone ex- ended up finding. Uh, do you collect those little figures? Because someone found the tune Blue Eyes White Dragon in the at work, no. and I thought first person I thought of was like, oh, that's probably uh, Peter's. Probably no, the only the only card game TCG I don't really like is Yu Gi Oh because I don't want to have to read an essay on every card. <laughs> they wasn't always that way. I know, and that's when I was okay with it. Shout out to Yu Gi Oh GX with the best opening theme song. No. The OG Yu Gi Oh has the best singer. You're, no, no. It, it Your will, move. It will um, not. No, no, no. That bass line. Do, 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 it's, do, 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 you're not going to win this. Do, 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 Everybody agrees. Oh, Yu Gi Oh GX no. gets you hyped to get it you has, ready. Look, it has a great show. It's a good follow up <laughs> to the original. But the, the OG theme. No. Doesn't. Can't I'm sorry for your loss, but it's been beaten. It just It's called Yu Gi Oh GX. Okay. Well, I'm actually going to put up a poll and we're going to see. We'll find it's, out what the poll says. It doesn't says. matter. Poll's going up. Which had the better Yu-Gi-Oh theme? Was it GX or the OG? There's only one theme. It's Yu-Gi-Oh Go, GX. Well, check out... check out. All I'm the, sure some of the other ones have some good ones. It's, it's going to be on all the socials, so just check it out might, Frenzy. Because it will go it up. It won't because Yu-Gi-Oh GX is already the better one. We'll see. I don't know. The original Yu-Gi-Oh had an interesting interesting tagline with it, what? where they actually killed people. Was well, sending them to the Shadow Realm? No, the Shadow Realm was... Uh, that's, censor- that's what we call censorship. <laughs> uh, they just died. Yeah, Merrick? Merrick was... Evil, evil. Yeah, if you saw he anyone, wasn't just like, oh, he's the the antac. No, he was evil, evil. If you saw anyone get sent anywhere, they just died. Yeah, you don't ever see them again. Also, Bandit Keith pointed a gun in that show, <laughs> and they didn't. Four kids didn't want you to see it. <laughs> just like when they gave Sanji from One Piece a lollipop yeah. instead of a cigarette. So any every time, every time you see uh, Bandit Keith going like this with his finger pointing, that's a pistol. <laughs> they also I, okay. We're, this is this is getting off topic. No, the it's out there. Anime is fine. Let's go. Uh, no, let's uh, let's let's continue to a different piece here because right. we'll keep it. Food. We're going we're going a little crazy there. All right, let's let's continue on. We're gonna go to the next section. This local news. Not much has happened. A lot has happened, but not really much. So we're going to keep it short and sweet. Um, as we all know, I like Loaded. Loaded was one of my favorite places to uh, have some really good Korean corn dogs. Last podcast, I actually had you try some. They were very good. It's fantastic. But Great sadly, cheese bowls. Oh, so good. They've uh, bridged to a, a new connection. And by new, I mean an original. To now, the city of Bridges. Yeah. They are in Pittsburgh now. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So Fun city. You could still enjoy the, the, the Korean corn dogs that... You know, Eight-hour drive if you're local. Yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, I'm willing to make the drive. If you want the road trip, we'll go. We'll make it. Fun. We'll make a. You day can do out. it in one day. Absolutely, dude. I've gone to. So, shout out to my friends uh, John Ortiz and my buddy Christian Joel Ramos. Which, by the way, forgot to mention, he invited me onto his pom- podcast not too long ago to basically do a recap of the X-Men '97 series. So go mm-hmm. check out his podcast, but. Myself and him. You guys talk about Batman in that? Batman? Yeah, and X-Men. Why would we talk about Batman? Why not? 
Because he's not on X- X-Men 97. Yeah, he is. He's from Marvel. No. We're not <laughs> playing this game. I like the episodes of the old X-Men show where they brought in Spider-Man. Yeah, he actually did. That's, that was a good episode when they fun. had the crossover. We ended up going. We, we, one day I was like, hey, I want to go get a Philly cheesesteak. And they're like, cool. You're like, you guys got anything to do? No. Want to drive to Philly? Sure. And we literally just drove That's pretty all the way to Philly. How long is that drive? It, it was like a 12-hour drive. 12, yeah, that's crazy. But we made pit stops. Like We drove through New York City. We ended up getting some pizza at a place called Rockies. Because we figured, hey. So how much time did you have for this then if you just decided to go on a 12-hour drive? We woke up. A, did you have like two days or did you just do this? In, no, we did it one day. You so can't we, do it in one day. That's, two, can, that's 24 we, hours. We did do it that's in one day. two 12-hour drives. I'm telling drives. you. That, there's, yes. there's not enough hours in the day yes, to do all this. No, we did. We, 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 is we, it 12 hours with the we, pit stops? With the pit stops. With the Pittsburgh stops? With the pit with the pit stops. We left we left <laughs> Lawrence, because that's where I was living and they're all we're all in Lawrence. We left, we had we go got in my shitty little uh Pontiac Grand Am GT and we drove from there through New York City, stopped in New York, went to a place called Rockies, because we were hungry, and we're like, hey, we're going to Philly, Rockies from Philly, the Phil- Rocky statues. Look at this place, it's a New York pizza place called Rockies. It was fake. It was really good pizza. They had stuff like uh, chicken, gar- uh, chicken broccoli par, uh, chicken broccoli ziti pizza. So it was I'm chicken broccoli saying. pizza, chicken broccoli ziti on the pizza. So you had really a pasta good. cake on your. Yeah. Pizza it was really pie. good. You had pasta. You had cake and pie in one yeah. thing. They also had a lasagna pizza, which yeah. was ricotta ground beef. Um, it was it was wicked good. Like I liked it. Okay. And then they had the traditional stuff too. Uh, That's we quite ended the up drive there though. But we so we get there right, and we were across Geno's and Pat's. Now we got to try both of them, and Geno's they're more of the like the puppet place shoots out of his little hand. What Mario RPG? Oh Geno, <laughs> yes, from the Star uh, Star Valley. Baby's first Mario, R- yeah. baby's first RPG is what I like to call that one. Now. I like I like Mario RPG. The remake I haven't had a chance. Oh, to it's play so yet. much fun. Uh, if the cutscenes are way better from what I heard. If you can't beat it fast enough, don't play RPGs. Shout oh. out to Brady. You haven't beaten that game yet. <laughs> is he not a grinder? Does he not grind? You don't need to grind in that game. You can yeah. play it at pace. Yeah, he doesn't seem like someone who would be The pace grind. is easy. He doesn't seem like someone who would be grinding. He doesn't like RPGs. He no. just likes Mario. Okay. Yeah, that's well, fine. Either way, we get there. Beat, won't be Paper Mario either. So All with right, Geno's, no. with Geno's, <laughs> right, you get the steak. You have a way of ordering it. It's similar to like when you go to the, when you see the Soup Nazi episode of Seinfeld. You have an order. You walk up, you're like... I want a, I want a cheesesteak with with or without and with without is onions right so you go there if you don't say it right they're just gonna be like get in the back of the line so we went there and we're like cheesesteak with without I got mine with so onions and it was all right it wasn't a big deal then we went to Pat's Pat's is the one featured in Rocky where Sylvester Stallone orders his cheesesteak before he goes for the big fight right. Mm-hmm. They even have a little thing on the ground where it says, you know, Sylvester Stallone stood here for that scene. And they have the little thing like memori- uh, mem- uh, memorialized on the ground. And that one, you know, they have more freeway. You can have mushrooms on it, peppers and onions on it. You can add Provi. You can do American. You can do whatever. So I went up and I want, I want, I want a uh, cheesesteak, Provi, shrooms with done. Boom. And that one was good. Mm-hmm. I liked Pat's better than Gino's personally. Geno's, they use Cheese Whiz. That's what they say they've always used. Not a fan of the Cheese Whiz. But the pro with shrooms, with onions. I can't really see Cheese Whiz being that great at all. It, I but didn't like it, but it's, it's apparently it's a thing. But again, I, I know some. I worked with someone. It's a thing because somebody thought it was a good idea, like making Moxie, and they go through and they go, <laughs> it's like, this is actually pretty good. And they don't realize how just not that great it is. Yeah. But, okay, so <clears throat> in my old work job, in my old job, I worked with someone named Dan Crawford. Shout out to Dan. And he's from Philly. And he's the one that told me, yeah, man, that those places suck. That's just a tourist trap. You know, you go there, you're just getting like, it'd be like going to Rome and having Alfredo, you know, fettuccine Alfredo. It's like Alfredo. going to Chicago and thinking that you got dish. a deep dish pizza, no. which is a good idea to a degree. But it's really the hot dogs you got to go with. Yeah, or the bar pizza. Yeah. That's their pizza. The thin crust bar pizza is what they actually have there that they are known for, that they themselves, the locals eat. And he told me there's some place, it's called Jimmy's or Johnny's or something. It's at an old mill yard at like this broken down hut. It's like, that's where you get the real Philly cheesesteak. Why is it always like the places that look the most dilapidated that tend to be? Or like least upkept. 
are the best. I, I think they do it on purpose because they don't want any of the like tourist people ruin it. So yeah. if, they, if it looks like crap, they're not going to go there. But the locals know once you walk in, it's clean, it's ready, and it's you know it's legit. It's so like um, I need to make a trip back to go try them. It's out. the least suspecting looking places on the outside is how I yeah. put it. Like oh, uh, Lawrence, they used to have the best hot dog place called Lawton's. Yeah, looked like a dump from the outside, but inside, nice and clean. Because you know they're not. Dogs. You know where their money's going into. It's going into what needs to be done, not how it needs to look. It's like yeah. um, there's a similar place here or in Nashua that's pretty good. It's a, a Hispanic place that was recommended to me. Uh, that it just it looks like a normal building outside. It's not like gross looking or anything. But it's just on the, the random side of like a, a street you wouldn't expect. And it's, it's just really small. It's called Casa Blanca. <gasps> That's Colombian food! And it's right across the street from the margaritas in Nashua. Mm-hmm. And I still need to go over there just because I'm not really ever around there. You and I have to go. But it is, all, it you, all you have to do is easy peasy park across at the margaritas lot because that way you don't have to park on the side of the road. Because yeah. it's literally just a city street in Nashua. You and I are making a trip. I've there. gone there. And it's really good Colombian food. I hear it's food. the best Colombian Nashua. food. It's easily one of the best. Yeah, so back to the news. The guy opened up the place down. They moved down there in Pittsburgh. So if you want really good Korean corn dogs, some of the best I've ever had, you're going to have to make a trip to Pittsburgh. And because of that, above the loaded building, there was also a restaurant called Stacks, which the owner and his brother started, what have you. Long story short, they closed. And so there's no more Stacks burgers. They had some really good burgers there that I like, Smash Burgers. I actually still make at my home every now and then. They had a Smash Burger on a buttered grilled potato roll bun that they would use with fig preserves, spring greens, and goat cheese. So freaking good. I still make that burger. After having it there, now that they close, I make it at home. It's delicious. So originally, he had a Mexican-style street food restaurant called uh, Stuffed. And people had been clamoring for him to come back. And last week, he announced that he is going to bring back Stuffed. And we're going to get his food back again. So is he bringing it back in that same location? Or is he going to be, obviously, in a different he, place? Or He hasn't announced yet. But he is going to be <clears throat> serving his food at a restaurant, sports bar restaurant in downtown Haverhill. I don't remember the specific name. I think it's called, like, Strikeout bar and food but either way you could look up stuff's facebook page and he's going to be serving the food there until he has a look a place open and ready to go as far as i know Mm -hmm. so we gotta go i'm taking you so the amazing thing is he makes california style burritos and most of the time california burritos have french fries in them he would make daily tots from scratch put in those instead that sounds way better and he would make them different every day so one day you'll go it's truffle cheese one day you'll go it's buffalo chicken one day you'll go it's jalapeno cream cheese so he would make different tots every day so you would go and get his stuffed burrito it would never be the same burrito twice okay it's so good so good we're definitely going there when they reopen honestly i might even do like a grand opening video you know we idea. could do that together it'll be fun keep an eye out for that all right, next in the news, we're going to talk about Joseph's Trattoria. So we talked about how the old location got flooded. Mm. They were looking to open the new location. They opened at Kruger's. I actually had my birthday dinner with uh, lunch, not dinner, because we went to Kasami for dinner. Mm. My birthday lunch with my mother and my grandmother there. And the food was really good. We got some rice balls, which was for the appetizer. Uh, Angelina, my daughter, ate it. She loved it. Mm. I ended up getting uh, a pasta don't remember exactly what because it's, it's july i had it back in january right i just remember overall the meal was great the service was good the portions were nice and big and the price wasn't too bad my grandmother ended up getting like a chicken a roast chicken over some rice some risotto and the thing like i'm telling you it's like a whole rotisserie roast chicken right on top of risotto just remember any of those costco fans no led on the chicken <laughs> wait what you haven't seen that video no there's this old dude who gives off the most immaculate Danny DeVito vibes. He goes in and he buy he's buying five Costco rotisserie chickens. And the whole background backstory to this or the lore, as I like to say for it, is he wants I, I think he uses the containers. He's like, they're they're changing the containers. I gotta I gotta get them now. But he doesn't want them to scan the actual containers where the barcode is. So he comes in with a white t shirt with the barcode, with the barcode on the <laughs> 
Just scan my shirt five times. No LED on the chicken. <laughs> I've never seen this. You're too busy drinking garbage. What, Moxie? Putting that lightly, yeah. I like it, and I'm not That's the unfortunate. only one. That's also unfortunate. Plenty of, there's, look, there's dozen of us that there's love There's not a Moxie. dozen of you. There's dozens. There's not 12 of you. There's dozens there's of us. There's not 24 of you. There's, Easily. There's, In the store? At work, there's only like three. No. There's like two and a half. There's there's 10 of us there's, that are there vocal. Is, there is there's not some, There's, there's not some closets. It, there's, I'm telling you, there's closets it, closeted Moxie lovers we got rid of. Store. We already got rid of them. What'd you do to them? Don't worry about it. They're not there anymore. There was never that many of them. You're there were right. at least there were There's, double digits. No, double digits. No, it's barely even five. It's like four. Moving on. Three. So Joseph's opened their location. <clears throat> Very nice building. Nice location. Good food. Definitely give them a shot and support a local business. They're still trying to raise money to cover the cost of the old building getting destroyed and the new one, you know, and the opening and the clearing and the cost to like get it up and running. So they're good. CJ's in Manchester got closed and shut down, totally torn down. They're currently in the process of building a new building, and they're going to have a Raising Cane's there. Have you ever had Raising Cane's? No. I heard that the only good thing about them is their sauce. Honestly, it's just one of those fast food places I just hear about and just have no desire for. Did you try the Dave's Ch Hot Chicken from Manchester? No. Have you ever had Dave, Dave's Hot Chicken I've had Dave's all? Hot Chicken. Dave's Hot Chicken is really good, but I had, I had it when I used to work for Peloton. And we would drive around, and we drove th through. Where's there? Is it in Austin? We had it in Boston. Yeah. So we had we would go to various places in Boston. It was like okay. Dave's Hot Chicken, and there was Crazy Good Kitchen in Malden. Crazy Good Chicken. Crazy Good Kitchen. Kitchen. I crazy, think it's Kitchen. Crazy Good Chick. Crazy. I can't say it. It's the Moxie. I'm telling crazy, you. It's not the Moxie. <laughs> I had that beer without anything to eat all morning. You're just blaming it on that. What are they known for? The chicken sandwiches. I know yeah, it's a crazy. Place. It's crazy good kitchen. I know that our friend. It's a Cam, wicked small place. You only go in there. And you you don't eat in it. You order and you leave. I know our friend Cam Buckley recommended a place called Flip the Bird. He said that place is really good. So, I suppose he also <laughs> plays Jet Force Gemini, and that's not a good game. There's nothing wrong with that. No, nah, no. I just want to. I just wanted to throw it out there for fun. Oh, uh, you can get Beyond Good and Evil 20th anniversary <laughs> on the Switch. I saw that right now at the announce. Oh, they just dropped it today, just now. Yeah. Right. Available now. I'm Can excited. I get that on my PlayStation? No, that's. I think that's a Nintendo exclusive. It's made by their second party. No, it wasn't made by them. It was made by. It wasn't. It was on the Xbox and the uh, GameCube. Rare. No. Am I confusing Beyond Good and Evil for something else? Probably. All right. So Dave's Hot Chicken opened in Manchester. Mm -hmm. I think I already went through that. I went there. It was good chicken. You're right. I tried the Reaper. Second hottest thing I've ever put in my mouth. And I like me some hot sauce. Peter can tell you, I bring in sauce bottles by the dozens. I do miss when we would have it and people would just be in the break room dying <laughs> from the, the smallest tidbits of it. And then I would just go in there, my favorite thing, just, either put it on a plain cracker or put it in a whole spoonful and just down it yeah. and just walk out. Sit there for five seconds walk out. Yeah. Watch as they just go, what just happened? One kid, they ended up doing that. And didn't wash their hands, went to use the restroom, and being a gentleman, what do guys do when they use the bathroom, a number one, started walking funny, complaining about pain, and next thing we know, he went home early from work. <laughs> he did it wasn't me. I'm too powerful poor, for that. Poor, poor kid didn't realize that even though he just opened the bottle with the cap, there's residue on the cap, and it was the bomb. It was a very explosive situation. <laughs> In terms of I pain. I felt so bad. Why? It's not your fault. It's, I brought the sauces in. Yeah, but you gotta know what you know what you're doing there. Everybody knows when you're dealing with when you're dealing with peppers, like spicy peppers, you can't touch anything after that. You have to wash your hands. It's just a common rule. He didn't wash his hands before. Well, then they just know that there's another issue all entirely with that. <laughs> well, it's not my problem. Late. You anyway. could say he basically had his entire day crashed right through. Well, he ruined and ruined his day. Speaking of crashes, <laughs> it was this is this was a while ago as well. I can let me pull up the exact date. Right. Uh, but over in uh, Hudson, Hudson New Hampshire, Hampshire, we have Mickey's uh, New York Pizza, which was. It used to be a Hudson House of Pizza. Really? Yeah, which was trash. Mickey's Bottom? Yeah, they swapped out a couple times there with some weird... I'm not going to lie. I went there for lunch the other this day. This is also in January. It's been a while. 
I drove past this. They had a car go through, like show the picture. They had a car go through, like right here. You can right in the dining area. Kind of see it into the dining area. Uh, I would like to note that there's r no path to the dining area there whatsoever. There wasn't even a ramp. There's not. How a, the heck did they get him there? There's there's a hillish it was piece a, to it. Yeah. But it was it had to have been airborne to get in the way that it did. Regardless of how it got in, <laughs> there's no way it should have gone in because both sides of the road turning into the parking lot of that restaurant indicate any way to do that. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure it was an el like an elderly woman or something that went through oh, it. I hope she's okay. Well, they, they, were, they, said, they, they said the person was fine. Yeah, and nobody was in the dining room. No, so no one got hurt. But thank goodness. I don't. I still don't understand how you messed that up. Like, it's like the it's it's like the the woman who drove into. The mall underneath the Prudential Tower. What? I think it is. Or the Nordstrom Mall or something. That drove her car. Oh, yeah. Into the she mall. <laughs> there was all over TikTok. She literally thought it was the exit to the to the parking garage. Went through the open double doors. And then was just driving through. I don't know. I don't know about you, but I would never have. I, there's there's never an indication of doors that open for you for your, your vehicle. So They had to uh, put cement pillars after that. I support retesting for driver's license. Absolutely, 100%. Uh, especially if you're from Mass, all of you. We're not being Re ageists either. This is no, no, a safety no, I, thing. And now I'm going I got hit, and I almost died. So, yes, please, <clears throat> there should be some type of test so that people can be safe I on think the in road. some states you can anonymous, anonymously send tips in to have people retested. We'll look into Which it. is a little too, I think that's too extreme for it. Yeah. But, like, there, there should be certain levels of, like, after events or different things depending on you should have to do a retest or do like be forced to go into a record like read on course yeah just just do do the the driver's test again just like you would in any other or just as, if I, as a motorcycle rider you and i both we need to retake it after x amount of years yes or no as long as you're from mass you just need to take it every year but why <laughs> why can't they do that with their cars no, no, they should do with the cars. Not every year, but at a certain point, it becomes exponentially shorter as be like, the older you become. It should be like every like 15, 20 years, like at the start. And then you're like, or just like pick increments. Like, just, this is when you got to go back in and you either got to retake. You don't have to, I guess you don't have to like pass the same way, but like they're going to do certain key pieces or whatever. Well, you have or to. Or depending be on like your record. Like, if you have nothing going like wrong with it, it should be fine. But if like you got like certain things like speeding tickets or depending on accidents, like if it's if you're the one at fault, there's certain things they just test you on. I honestly feel as an Uber driver and a Lyft driver that the test that they put me through in some of them was harder than the actual driver's license test. That's yeah. sad. That is not, that should not be the case. Yeah, no, it shouldn't. Well, whatever. Moving on. On the note now, from then to now, they are reopened. Yeah, I had lunch with Oh, so, there. I asked you if you wanted to come, but you already had Wingstop on the way. So. Yeah, I was having some good corn, some Cajun corn. Yeah. Someone asked you if it was corn. You said no. <laughs> you lied to them. Well, I, I mean, was in the break room. You're literally it's like, is that corn? You're like, no. And it's crunch. <laughs> well, I mean, it is what it looks like, but when you're going to ask me a dumb question, <laughs> I'm going to answer you, with you a dumb say, answer. They believed you, too. No, they, no, they didn't. No? It, I was it was literally it was literally a, it was literally a thing of corn. How is it not corn? And they looked like they believed you. And they're like, okay, and turned around and walked away. And I'm just laughing in the they, they, every yeah. single time I get a question like that when it's very obvious <laughs> of what I have, and I understand where it's coming from, so no, I'm not making I'm not making fun of individuals for asking these questions. <laughs> but like if I'm sitting there and I'm drinking drinking something like this, I say, Are you, is that is that a drink? No, it's ice cream. <laughs> well, from my point of view, from a third party perspective, they straight up looked like they believed you and then said, okay, I walked away. And then I just see you continue to eat like the corn on the cob. As my new saying, <laughs> couldn't be bothered. Simply <laughs> could not be bothered. I'm the one who does the bother ring. Oh, man. I'm not the bother E. I'm the bother Either way. I had their lunch. It was corn. The psych. You gotta try some. You know what? That's the other thing that stuffed is good at. Their street corn is the best I've ever had. Yeah. You're gonna try it. Street You're gonna corn love it. is good. Also, secret menu item. I don't know if you're still gonna have it. Polly, for the love of God, my guy, please bring back the street corn fries. That was Ooh. easily the best thing you had, in my opinion, next to the stuffed burrito. I know you're gonna listen to this too. I'm gonna send you a link. <laughs> so, 
We got to do an interview. I'll see if I could get him in for an interview. We Similar to what I did with Dante. An, an impromptu thing. Just show up for the beginning of it. And but either way, I ate at the Hudson location. The pizza was all right. It was a little dry. It wasn't really as good as the dairy location. The dairy location was awesome. But I don't know what's going on with the Hudson location, but they're not on par with the dairy. Well, you so. you got to have one one key location, and then you just have another. No. There has to be consistency. It doesn't have to be. There has to be. No, consistency. See, that's how you know no, one of them is no, good. No, let's talk about consistency. You, know, you got to stop look, slapping no, the table. Listen, You're gonna get in the microphone. Listen, I went. Look, it's the mafia. I, it's getting look, to him. I go Uber after work every day now, and I grab. I've been doing a lot. Explains more why your reviews. Smash Bros. game is slipping. I'm, yes, it is. And I'm not gonna even argue. It's yes, already slipped. But I try to grab something to eat before I start driving for a few hours. And I've been doing a lot more food reviews on my page. Yeah. And I went to the Panda Express in Nashua. Yeah, that's pretty okay. It was garbage. What do you mean it's okay? Well, that's what I mean. That's what garbage means. No. Okay. No garbage is like it's almost a fast, inedible. It's a fast. F- it's not inedible. It was barely you're, edible. You're drinking mocha. No, it was no. Okay, you've already guy, made, like, th- th- put no. things into perspective. I drink moxie. I'm telling you, this is garbage. You're eating well, sardines. How bad can like, that be? Think about that. I don't know. You got look, some. Sometimes you got some weird opinions. Look, they had the spicy orange chicken. What they're no, they invented the damn thing, they and they made a spicy orange chicken. I'm like, I'm gonna try this with some lo mein and some cheese ragouts, which is a completely different argument altogether. What? What? They're so hard up in cash that they can't even put real imitation crab in the thing and make it crab ragouts. It's yeah. not real crab. I you know what it did? You know, you know what it's like? It's like they got the Philadelphia chive and onion cream cheese, got a dollop of it, threw it on a wonton, fried it, and call it a day. It was fucking awful. Awful. Well, you're awful. The fir- Worst $11 that I ever fucking spent. So <laughs> mad. The chicken was just covered in this glue. It was like Elmer's glue consistency sauce. <clears throat> and then the breading was, how does this make sense? Like soggy. And then just around this dry, sad, pathetic piece of chicken. It was just, it was awful, man. Somebody and you said it was, Chinese you said it was, it was okay. It's okay. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. The noodles were mush. I went there, the mush, I've only been there once. The cabbage and the celery was just pathetically wilted and sad. I can't like, who, who in their, who, who in their right mind would spend money there? It's trash. The mall has three Chinese places, chi- Chinese, Chinese restaurant places that is just leaps and bounds above this place. Because hey, it's not a Chinese place. Dude, my expectations were already floor level low. If they were any lower, they'd be below sea level. It was trash. Tra- never again. Imagine getting never a, again. Imagine getting a heat that of a place. Panda Express and getting this mad. But they're supposed to be consistent. Even if they're garbage, they're supposed to be somewhat edible garbage. It is not. Edible. If you I ate look, it. I had Panda Express somewhere else. It was fine. It was again passable. This was not passable. I would have complained and had them give me something else, but I didn't have time. I was on lunch. By the time they gave me something else, I would have had to either one eat it later, and then it would have been awful because it would have been just cold reheated shit. Or two, I would have been late coming back from work, and I can't do that. So I just ate it. It wasn't an edible because I fucking ate the whole thing. But I you gotta take a break I, on the table. I I hated the whole thing. I felt like I was like five years old being forced to eat my garbanzo beans again. I fucking hated it. Looks like my old trap worked. I told them to give them the worst plate possible, and they did. It's really not that bad. I think you probably just went there a bad day. Most of these fast food places are barely being run properly these days, anyway. Like that Chipotle over there is also extremely spotty. Well, Chipotle. Chipotle. We're not going to get into anything with Chipotle, but the, I mean, fast food places in general are pretty spotty nowadays. They, the whole reason why people go to fast food places is because they want consistency and speed. Yes, you don't go there expecting a gourmet meal, but you shouldn't have to worry about whether you're going to have a seven or a two in quality. I've it should be had... an even keel five. I'm going to give Panda Express a ten on the ten. Go there. I'm going to go there tomorrow. Go. And I want your opinion. And it's going to be delicious. We're coming back to this. We're not coming back to we're this. We're coming back. I'm going <laughs> to leave that back. entire rant. I'm bringing dirt. this back. We're coming back to this. No. This is coming from a man who likes sardines, so we don't trust that. Okay. Now. Nope. We're done. Is, no, 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 no. We're already no. done there. No, 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 no. All right. So no, moving no. on. Speaking of National Asian food. Let's go. 
we've what was it? We talked about this in the first one, not the second podcast episode. Yeah, we did. The Sriracha? We had a little bit of an update, how the guy actually, they re-released it, but it was still hard to find. Oh, so yeah, yeah, because yeah. we were trying to find it on, they, no, they were talking about how we re they, with Sriracha, they re-released it under a different brand. Well, the guy who start. owns the farms released it under a different band brand. It's like Dragon Sriracha yeah, or something. Yeah, it's just really expensive. And then the guy who owns a Sriracha brand started buying peppers from a different yeah. farm. Well, we originally talked was, about it being a supply issue, and we were focused on that portion there, and it's no, just it, it was it's just greed. a quality and uh, a, uh, a money issue. Capitalism strikes again. Yep. They brought the pitchforks, and they don't have the sriracha. The new one's not that bad. Did it's not the, the same. One? No. Well, we didn't get it. Yeah, it has to, we were going to order it. We were going to order it, but we got the, reg we got the new recipe version yeah. sriracha which is okay I still, not bad i like okay. the tabasco brand you told me to go try it i got it yeah it's it pretty really okay good. i like that one out of the the rest i feel like it's i feel like too much with the sriracha brands like hit or miss you There's know which no one consistency. i brought the other day the melinda's the melinda's hot sauce that's it's okay in the break room. you it's like right. that one too it's decent but there's like there's nothing quite hits the same way as the OG. as the OG bottle, the one that made everyone think that the sriracha was the brand of the sauce. You know what this reminds me of? It's like when you have like a really good band, and then two of the founding members split. One stays with the brand, the band. The other one tries to start something new, and it's just not the same. They just they didn't yeah. have the sauce when they were together. They they had like they had the sauce, and it just it was amazing music. And then just both of them were just not as good as the sum of their parts. Yeah. You know what's a good example? Evanescence. I loved Evanescence. I love their music. The first album, and I'm talking about Origins, their EP. To be honest, most of you probably following. only know one song, so I'm here with you. Continue. And then Ben Moody left the band because him and, and Amy Lee were dating and broke up. He started his own band afterwards and became Breaking a music Benjamin. Producer. No, I'm just kidding. That was he me. actually. You, did you know he helped write Avril Lavigne's second album? No. And that but. album was a banger too. But long story short, like he and her just made great music together. But now she's gone way more acoustic and piano and like orchestral. And he was the one that kind of added more of that metal, heavier, kind of darker side to the music. The new metal side tell. to it. Well, no, like there were actual solos in the music. Oh, yeah, that so doesn't mean it's metal, not new metal. New metal, no, because new metal, part of new metal is more rhythm based. There's no solos in it. The divorced dad rock side of this. He brought it. No, no. What? That's what, he, what we said. That's what it is. Either way, they're only on divorced dad rock playlists look, now. He, look, along so, with Creed, divorced uh, dad rock made for grilling and chilling. Creed is definitely there as well. Take as me that. higher and Nickelback too. Yeah. Um, so okay. you guys actually all like Nickelback. Let's be honest. The only re they're just pop chords. That's why you like it. But that's well, why you also like to hate yeah, it. The reason I think most people just got pissed off at the fact that he cut off his hair and got rid of his goatee and started dating Avril. And that's, I, 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 you could almost see where those two things cross intersected, and then boom, people started hating them. No, it's just, it hasn't been the same. It hasn't been the same. They just released the 20th anniversary for the uh, Fallen album, and Bun Moobity on his We like, only need the one channel. song. What we song? only ever needed the one song. No, the whole, the whole album's good. No, we don't care. Except about My that. Immortal. That one, that one. We don't, we, like, nobody like, cares about the rest of the song. I'm sorry. Right. We only, everyone only knows the one song. No, they know. No, no, there's no. two songs. No, no, no. No, they, no, no. They have I'm only thing. acknowledging one. Don't call me when you're sober wasn't a hit. I don't even don't call me like I know what that song is. You do know it. No, anyway. it's not Smash Mouth. I'm not here for it. <laughs> R.I.P. Poor guy. Yeah, I'm glad I got to see them before that at the bi at the Big E. Yeah, had some fair food and then go to to the see them play and then go Shrek Shrek Shrek. He hated that. We did. He we we that. we all did that when they played All Star and they played Believer. So. Too bad. He's, uh, That's God bless him, walking on the sun for real now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was the next topic? Uh, there was some stuff we were talking about. We're gonna, we were discussing between me and you around Easter. So going back to, was Easter March this year? It was in April. I don't even remember. Honestly, I never remember. I just think of it as April. So <laughs> April. it was, uh, there was some stuff that Walmart was doing around. They were lowering the price of their groceries to pre-inflation levels to make it for... And they were starting with Easter meals. I don't. I haven't looked more into this recently to see if it's still like that, because the only Walmart close enough is the one in Hudson, and the one in Hudson is only very partially grocery store. Did you not go? No, the Manchester one's closer for you, isn't it? Maybe now. I'm still not going up that direction. Why? Not for not for Walmart. 
Why? It's the it's a super Walmart. It's a good one. I'm pretty sure it's like the same distance. No, it is, but it's the better Walmart. I live in Manchester. I would know. Yeah, it's unfortunate. The Hudson not for one me. is like almost like a Caldors from 1990. You know, it's. Funny. I think it is a retrofitted Caldors. The closest Walmart. Or Ames. The closest Walmart is. Those are some deep cuts. From here is actually the one on Amherst Street. A Bradley's, if you will. Is the Super Walmart on Amherst or the Hudson one? The one in Manchester is not closer. It will take me longer to get there. You know you know your way around your home better than I I know my way to Walmart, people watching. Yeah, the prices so the have Mountain been Dew. going crazy, man. And it's all about greed, really. It's just, they interviewed me for Channel 9 News while I was walking into Market Basket on uh, Elm Street in Manchester. Yeah. And they were, like, interviewing people about the price of eggs. And, dude, eggs were, like, <clears throat> $8.00. They got like, a dozen. Yeah, I remember when they were like it seven. It was ridiculous. It and was, that was like market basket brand. It was crazy enough when you could get the egg whites or like the liquid eggs yeah. for cheaper because usually that costs more. And it was all greed. People said enough's enough. No one was buying the eggs. And then you would see the eggs stack up in the grocers. And then they waited until the prices got back down. And then they started buying them again. Yeah. And now we're like at $3 a dozen, which is still higher than it was before. Yeah, it'll go back down eventually. It's just a supply a demand of it it's more just the supply of the eggs everything's getting more expensive man yeah. and that's that's the other thing well, the reason why i'm happy, not ramen noodles you know and it's so honestly and this is the reason part of the reason why we do the reviews because we work hard for our money more and for your money, dollar and more yeah and money is getting us less and less for every dollar we spend so if we're gonna go somewhere to spend food money on food whether it be at a restaurant, at a fast food place, or even at a supermarket, you know? We're here to inform you what is good and what isn't so you don't end up wasting money. Exactly. So that's what we do. That's why we do what we do. No, we're not getting sponsors. We're not putting that's why ads we're, in our, We don't put ads in our stuff. That's why we're telling you right now in this current sponsor. There is no sponsor. Shut up. Panda Express. No. <laughs> I'll decline. Even if they pay me, I'll say no. You can't even. I will not take an can't endorsement even, can't even from a mean. place I will not eat. You can't even be mean to the panda. The, nope. only, the only animal that can't nope. be racist. Oh my god. I gotta cut that. That's coming out. <laughs> That's coming out. <laughs> I can't fucking leave that shit in there. Holy <laughs> You're gonna leave like that's a, a funny one. You're gonna leave the whole that's three minute, the whole three minute rant of yelling in there. No, that yeah. was a little too much on Panda Express. Yeah, no, they were absolute dude. It was, I definitely, was, mad. It was definitely not. I that was bad. mad. I was the whole time I was Ubering. I was just. We're gonna start a new segment. It's called Unnecessary Anger with Giuseppe. Don't buy Panda Express. I'm gonna buy it. You should All buy right. it too. I, I warned you. All right, what's next? What are we talking about? Oh, a recap. Recap of my reviews. All right, yep. Haven't posted anything since October of last year. I that was the last things here and there. Well, that was the season finale. I ended up doing. Yeah, I thought the you did some more stuff like here, like little bits here and there. I think they're little quick episode bits. Yes, you but put, those, are, those are more written things. reviews. Yeah, and but those, yes. those are still those are still those are the recents. Yes. So I've been doing a lot more written reviews. He a went lot to Panda Express once, and his memory's and already fading. Guess that's why you shouldn't go. Yeah, the food gave me brain. It's actually because he ordered worms. a moxie with it, and that's what did it. But whenever uh, you have moxie, it takes the flavor of everything else down. Well, so I've been doing a lot more food reviews. Some of the places I've gone. Just a quick recap is I've gone to Patrick's Roast uh, North Shore Eatery. They're really good for roast beef sandwiches, North Shore beefs. They have really good. Uh, they also have uh, someone, an uh, old friend of mine, he and I, I would go to his place all the time for uh, Lebanese food. He mm. had Jim's Kebabs Express in Merrimack Street in Lawrence. And when he closed down to retire, everybody was wicked disappointed. I was bummed. Oh, was that the one that you had the pop-up? Yep. So he ended up open. Now he does Wednesday through Fridays at the Patrick's North Shore Eatery. And you can go and get some of his stuff from his, like his, his, his best-selling stuff from his old shop. He just, they asked him, hey, man, how's retirement? He's like, I think I hate it. <laughs> and he's like, hey, would you want to cook in my kitchen? The dude talked to him. And he's like, yeah, sure. So now he does he does the Lebanese food Wednesdays and Fridays. That's fine. Wednesday through Fridays at Patrick's. So that's cool. Um, I ended up going to Bella's. There's Bella's in, in North Andover heading towards Haverhill. Their North Shore beef, that was delicious. I was a huge fan of his food. Another place I ended up going and having some really good food was... Oh, I went to Campo Enoteca for my anniversary with my wife. And their pasta was okay. I ended up there, uh, Cacio Pepe is what I ordered. 
I think, no, 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 I had the carbonara. I had the carbonara blend, needed more sharp pecorino romano cheese. I think that they didn't use enough or any, and they just stuck to Parmesan. You got to have that bite from the pecorino to really kind of like elevate that flavor. Mm -hmm. My wife ended up getting, I think like a stroganoff or something, and she loved it. We went to Firefly, wasn't a fan of their pasta either. Kind of bugged him. <laughs> wow. Um, and yeah, no, just just check out the, the page. I've been trying to stay busy, not going too in-depth on all of them, but like definitely posting a lot. The last video I posted was the Joker one, where I dressed up as uh, the Mark. The major one, yeah. Yeah, the, the Mark Hamill Joker with my friend uh, Sophia who is a streamer and a professional cosplayer. Uh, she's Harley Quinn in almost every single local Comic-Con. Really great person, beautiful person, beautiful heart. She's awesome. I've known her since like high school. She's great. But yeah, definitely check that video out if you know, you're know you a fan of like the Joker and Harley Quinn. And or wait till October and watch it as an in-theme video. Yeah, but it's really good. But I got a few videos in the workshop. I got a few videos in the pipeline. They'll be coming out. So by next you know, podcast, we'll be able to recap those. Yeah. How about you? Have you have you tried anything specific that you want to like show your quick little opinion of now? I don't think so. I went. I, I mean, know, you I did really Wingstop. How good was Wingstop? Well, Wingstop's just okay. I mean, if it's, it's good. Is it Panda Express okay? No, no. Okay. I don't know. I haven't, had, I haven't had Panda Express in like a couple of years. I don't. I don't drive over there. If I gotta leave the mall, I'm. I'm not doing it. You don't have to. The Chinese food in the mall is way better. No, but if I'm gonna leave the mall, it's for a Costco Glizzy. Yes, the dollar fifty Glizzy. Let's go. Is it still dollar fifty? Or is it it's now dollar fifty nine? Okay, that's what this price is. It went up nine cents. Well, it was always dollar fifty nine. No, it was dollar. It was dollar. Now you're lying to yourself. Just like the Panda Express getting to you. <laughs> no, no, no. Ah, uh, I don't think I've really had that much. I haven't really gone out to eat all that much to like create any interesting places besides the sushi place. Or the food I bring in. Yeah. I'm more of a person of circumstance. Okay. It usually just comes to me because I have my own gravitational pull. My raccoon energy pulls all the food leftovers to me. I do have an idea for the main topic of the episode. The main topic is basically seasonal foods. And it goes for many different types. We were thinking more towards... The winter seasonal ones, but, this but due to a series stuff. of unfortunate events, unfortunate events <laughs> book three, yes, chapter two, yeah. sentence whatever. Well, the R. R. Martin of the <laughs> food podcast. <laughs> I haven't even seen any of the Game of Thrones <laughs> stuff at all. I haven't watched or read but too thick of books. You, you saved yourself a lot of heartbreak. I wasn't someone who ever watched the series from beginning to end as it came out. I waited till the last season when the at last few. Imagine episodes getting were such a garbage ending. I don't even know what it is. I still don't care. Well, people say Attack on Titan had a garbage ending. It didn't. They're liars. Really? Yeah. I've, I've, I I already know how it ends thanks to the manga, but we're not spoiling anything here. But I can tell you right talking. now, it is not a bad ending, and uh, whoever says it is is a fake fan. Okay. There's a bunch of uh, garbage people out there. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to watching the last few episodes and seeing if it's the same or different than the anime, the manga. I thought it was a pretty good ending, but again, we'll see. I'll I'll try to confirm that for you later. Um, I can tell you if it deviates. I'll tell you if it deviates or not okay. well enough. I don't think it. I, from what I told, it's, it's pretty, pretty sure it does it better. Same. Yeah. yeah. It does it better. I okay. There's, there's the some execution was better, but the theme was the there same. was they had more ex better execution with it for sure of it, certain sec sections of the last couple episodes. Okay, and I'm being as vague as possible. I know, think. and I know what you're talking. And about. it's they they did it manage to, to set it up better than the manga could because of the the it it comes down to sometimes the ability format. of the medium. Yeah, the, the medium of the of it being an anime was able to portray better the emotion and the characters yeah. than. The panels could exactly, especially if you draw a panel a certain way and you write something a certain way, it'll look like they're whining and crying like an incel yeah. compared to having it spoken with a professional voice actor and hearing the pain and agony. Yeah, well, it's like it's it's just like a a, a really good example I can put for it, which isn't up the, when I'm laying down which there. isn't the same way. You're, you're picking up, yeah, when I'm which isn't the same vein of it. Is if you if if anyone's a Demon Slayer fan watching this. It's the the manga for Demon Slayer is good, but there's one complaint a lot of people have with it, and it's Zenitsu's abilities. I'm gonna spoil this piece because this isn't really a spoiler, but all the elemental portions of that in that show are fake. They're not real. They're just for show. Then they're throwing fire around. They're throwing water. That's not real. It's all imagination. It's all, it's actually all not real in their head. Yeah, 
they're just seeing it's, it. It's not for them to see. It's them to articulate the the breathing techniques. It's just for it's just that's, for artistic that's, piece. That's hilarious. But one that, of the ones that that's doesn't like, that's like watching Pokemon and then realizing, oh yeah, no, the Pokemon don't really exist and walk around them. It's no, just no, them it's, pulling it's, out their Game Boys and it's, just it's, <laughs> no, no, it's it's. <laughs> that's a very that's a very poor analogy. <laughs> no, the, the, it's the actual fights because you never no one ever gets burned. No one ever gets splashed with water. No one gets struck with lightning. It's just fake, but it doesn't look as good if you don't do that. It's all in their heads. But the thing is, what I'm getting to is that the equivalent is Zenitsu uses lightning with it and it like zips through. And when he draws that on the, the artist draws it on the panels, it's not as effective as it is in the anime. That's so true. it's kind. It's not exactly the same type of thing you're gonna run into with it, with Attack on Titan, but it is like an example of how an animation is able to exceed the original work. So going back to seasonal food, though. Yes. <laughs> so we're talking about seasonal foods. Now we're into our summer seasonal foods. Well, we're gonna talk about all the different seasonal in general, like McDonald's. McDonald's tends to do seasonal pies. So they have like the cherry cream pie. They have the um, holiday cream pie. That I don't acknowledge the pies. They have like. Uh, um, He's the only one that knows about the pies because he had to go cry about them after having the uh, Panda Express. No, the, the only one we care about the is the seasonal shamrock shake. The blueberry shakes. cream pie. They no have one's going shakes. there for the pie. Listen, man, the holiday pies is like a custard pie. It is so good. I can down 10 of them in a single So city. is this where our age They're difference delicious. comes in? You go there for the pie and I go there for regular the, food? For the shakes? Did you try the Shamrock McFlurry? Actually, I didn't have Or it not the Shamrock, the Grandma McFlurry? No. No? No. I heard it was like, a lot of people saying it's really, really good. It seems pretty good. Yeah. Well, what's in it? I don't even know I don't what's know. in it. You know? I don't know. Let me look, look it up. up. I saw a picture of it with like the, uh, the grandma from Wind Waker, and that's what... <laughs> Anime, go bring it back to anime. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Well, not anime. It's Zelda. Fake yeah, but hand. it's like an anime. No, no, it's cell shaded, and it's not. It's not the same thing. So Zelda, you don't think fits in the anime category? No, anime is. You know what? You're correct because is the cartoon, cartoon, the only cartoon that they made of Zelda was actually a Western style cartoon. Ah, you're so correct. the grandma McFlurry. But there's a Zelda manga. Yeah, that's not the same thing. The Grandma McFlurry has Grandma's syrup, which is butterscotch syrup, crunchy butterscotch pieces, and vanilla soft serve ice cream. So it's like taking out Grandma's candy from a purse and crushing it into your ice cream. Oh, like the hard butterscotch candies? Yeah. Like I mean, butter- it's probably better. What is it, like the Werther's or whatever? Yeah. Oh, you put that in there? That's probably yeah, we're good. Okay. So, you know, I gotta, I've got to give that a try. But, you know, so out of all the holiday seasonal foods, what is your favorite? I already told you, mine is the custard pie. Well, it depends what you're going for. If I if I want like ice creams mm-hmm. and go towards the Blizzard route, most of the time the Christmas flavors tend to be the best for that. And like coffees, mm-hmm. like sugary type coffees, you get like, like Starbucks sh- flavors. Yeah, you get like dude, the chestnut praline. But you get like coffee. candy canes. Oh, you God. get like peppermint. I got all my there. wife on the chestnut praline. Now she's like so depressed because she can't order it anymore. It's like it's gonna come back, babe. It'll be back. But it's you know still when it comes back. Like, it comes back the same time every year. Yeah. And then uh, you get like snickerdoodle, sugar cookie, all those delicious From things. Dairy Queen, right? Well, all various places. Yeah, the blizzards are good. I like, out of, so for them, I like, they have like a campfire s'more. Yeah. That's like a smoky kind of like toasted marshmallow that they put in there, which is weird how they get it to taste that way, but it's very good. The dip blizzards is very yummy. St. Patrick's Day gets its quick bit with people just using green food coloring. Thankfully, it's not Red 40. Um, <laughs> if you drink green beer and it's not a sour, you are not Irish. You are just culturally appropriating yourself. <laughs> like, I married my wife who's Irish. The only green beer you can have, well, I'm going to be honest, is if you... They, I think they do. They make, like, green Guinness. Because it's still Guinness. Oh, you mean, like, so good. You mean like if someone, like, um, I don't know, uh, what's a Canadian beer? Stella Artois. That's not Canadian. No, I always thought That's Stella. English. That's Stella Artois. It's English. It's not Canadian. It's English. What's a Canadian beer? I don't it's know. A Canadian. I'm pretty sure Stella's Canadian. I don't think it is. It's, <laughs> actually, what's funny is Stella Artois is actually a very prime example of how marketing works in different international markets. Because in the U.S., it's marketed as a higher tier beer, even though I... It's 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 their trash beer. It's it, their it, no no it, it is I know it is their trash beer and it's from the it's not it's the UK. It's it's not it's not Canadian. 
what is the Canadian beer though? I think it was actually from Belgium originally this one, but it's like it, in the other market, it's, it's there's a Canadian beer. I know there's one. What is it? I don't know. Canadian beer or us. Either way, it'd be like I don't know if Heineken came out with the green beer. The bottle's green. That doesn't even work. I don't know. What, partake? There's some beer called Partake. No, it's not. I don't, I don't but think. But yeah, St. Patrick's. I don't, think, I don't think Canada has that many like big beers. But St. Patrick's got green beer. Mm. Well, they just got know. green everything. You're just grinching it up in a different way, in a dark. Right way. now, the seasonal food right now is lobster rolls. You can't go anywhere without someone offering. Well, some that's type just of the area. Roll. Do you like lobster rolls? Of course. Cold uh, mayo, or do you like it hot butter? Probably usually cold on the summer day. Because if I'm eating it with hot and butter, I'm going to eat the lobster itself. I didn't say the mayo. But the whole point is that it's it's on a toasted buttered bun. Not all the time. And then it's usually got like the. the, the a Not nice slice of like like lettuce in the middle, and then you got like the you the got all these weird expectations. The it is so so. You got on. a lot of like one track so minds. You rather situations. you rather have just cold. I don't know. It doesn't really matter chewy, to me. if I'm having if I'm having lobster. I'm having mayo lobster. slopped lobster. Sure. On it. On a no one said no one said it had no one said it had cold, mayo slopped in it. Soft, just spongy bread. It's because it's usually at one of those quick places that just serves you a massive portion, and it's good. Get name me a place. I don't even remember. It's been so long. Have you gone to Tuckaway? Tuckaway Tavern? Yes. Yeah, yeah, for a burger. Well, Mondays and Tuesdays, they have buy one, get one free. Their burgers are so good. Today's Monday. Today's Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday? Today's Tuesday. No, it's Monday. Today's Tuesday. I worked yesterday. I don't work on Sundays. I work on Mondays. Are it's you gaslighting me right now? <clears throat> it's Wednesday. It's Tuesday. It's 100% Tuesday. Uh, you have to check. No, no, I'm checking this for you. <laughs> okay. Tuesday. I'm like, I thought I was starting to get you to question yourself. <laughs> no, I don't question myself. Every, all right. So every Monday, Tuesday. I will, I will fully go into wrong. Every Monday and Tuesday. It's buy one, get one free at Panda Express. You it's, can get no, double the enjoyment, no, double no, the fun. Stop looking at the camera like you're sponsored. We're not. <laughs> but they do a buy one, get one free lobster roll. You want to go get one after? We'll Maybe. Get, we'll get I'll one, think about we'll it. We'll get one of each. And I'll think about it. Cut it in half. So that place is kind of far. I'll take my car. And I, oh, no, I, got, I do laundry today. It's, Just leave it running. By the time we get back, no, it's you can still, switch it's it over. still up there. It's still up there. Oh, you're folding it? I need to fold it. I think I probably I probably have to fold it right now. Fine. To be we'll honest, we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll do it some other Monday. Or I Tuesday. do have to fold it right now. We'll do it another Monday. Or Not Tuesday. immediately right now, but well, we're going there, and then we're having one of each. And we're gonna decide once for all whether or not the cold mayo lobster roll is better than. I don't the think I really egg. have a preference. I think I just don't remember because I, I usually just ordered fried clam strips because I just freaking love those. You get the strips. You don't even get the whole bellies. I love fried clam strips because they don't cost as much. You can get so much. But you don't get the flavor. Yes, you do. It's not the same. It doesn't matter. It's what I want. No, nope. whole belly or nothing. No. When I was, you know, when I ate strips. When they were frozen in a box from Market Basket, and I was eight. Yeah, and I don't even think they sell strips. And you anymore. probably got a whole case of Moxie too given to you, and I can see where your poor taste came from. No, whole belly clams are far <laughs> superior than the strips. I didn't say they were they were better than the whole belly. I just said that's what I like. Okay, I can agree to that. That's that's a fair enough assumption. For this me, is why he's bad at Smash Bros. I need Jump. to have that doesn't. You're like it's like you're on a, it's like you're on a trampoline jumping to conclusions. <laughs> Look, <clears throat> I want to know actually what people think, whether or not they think it's it. Are you a whole belly clam person, fried clams, or are you a clam strip person? I know that you could just get so many strips. But the whole point you know how is the, the whole you belly, know how expensive the bellies where is? all the flavors There's in. still flavor in the strips. But it's not the same. It doesn't matter. You know what the strips are the equivalent of? The strips are the equivalent of, of you getting the rings of the calamari when you get fried calamari. Yeah, but that's good too. Us who are a little bit more on the artesian side can understand that the tentacles are where the flavor's at. The tentacles is the best part of this the fried calamari. This coming from somebody who purposefully eats sardines. So, okay, you brought it up, we're bringing it in. We're not. All right, yes, we're sardines done. are actually an amazing cheap food. And they're very good for you. They're high in protein, <clears> they are high in calcium because you're chewing on the I bones, the bones are edible. Too. And they come in so many different type of flavors and oils. All right, you you'll eat can tuna out of a can with a fork, and you're telling me that you rather eat that overprocessed cat food over whole delicious marinated sardines? Okay. You've never had sardines. I'll give you this. You can't really, even give me an opinion this on. This is gonna go in a really quick and easy answer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you you gotta try it. 
at least once, once, all I'm asking is once, you hate it after that one bite, I will respect your opinion and never bring it up again, but you got to try it once. We don't take advice once. like this from somebody who doesn't like Panda Express. You can express your feelings, but not express your poor taste. You're trying it, please. <laughs> please try it. I, it's just one bite. I'll think about it. All right. And I'll I've thought you on about it. Well, no. I'll bring, you know what? I'll bring the sardines for next Pete's Eats. And what yeah, else? we're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bringing a sardine. Spoiler warning: We're making. I'm making you a sardine. They might get sandwich. here, but the way they're gonna go is the trash. Sardine sandwich. I'll make sure to bring. I'm making you. I'm making you a sardine sandwich, and you'll see how good it is. Yeah, I won't. All right. So holiday flavored stuff. I like it. It's fun. Changes up the seasons. Some things I wish wasn't seasonal. Seasonal beers are good. You know, like a traveler. You know, remember the Curious Traveler brand? No. They used to have something called a Jolly Traveler sh uh, shanty beer. Best one they had. I know you can get a lot of or, seasonal ciders. What about the pumpkin beers? How many people love uh, the the shipyard? <clears throat> what is it? Is it shipyard that makes the jack? There's a couple ones. Yeah, yeah. The jack, the jacko ones. Yeah. Oh, they're so good. Yep. Very, very. The good. pumpkin beers are so mm -hmm. good. I you drink a whole case. I have a T-shirt for them. You know what? I was really good too. I had a uh, the ice cream, the seasonal ice creams, pecan. Butter pecan ice cream from Ben and Jerry's. Seasonal? Oh my god. You yes. get it all year round though. No. Not like from them, but like other everywhere else. No, some have seasonal ice creams you can only get during special seasons. Well, well I know that. I'm just yeah. saying butter pecan isn't really a seasonal flavor. No, butter pecan pecan pie. Sorry. Pecan pie. That's still not from Ben and Jerry's. Really season, that doesn't feel seasonal. It's that feels like a Thanksgiving. Lie. No, it only comes out around Thanksgiving. Yeah, I'm um, shutting you down, Ben and Jerry's. You guys have trash. It's delicious. You probably also eat no, sardines. It is phenomenal. It is really, really good ice cream. That other ice cream company, bring back the mac and cheese one for me. It's probably far superior. We haven't even got to try that. Because it doesn't exist anymore. Air around. No, it was like really, it was locational. All right. Well, well, normally we would go into what are we eating and what are we going to eat. We kind of already did that. But we already did that. So now we're going to move on to. I think we already kind of did this next part too, but. Yeah, well, depends. You, I, I brought you some food to work. You remember the stuff that I brought you? Like I brought you the sirloin sliders with the honey and brie. Do you remember Those that? are really good. That was delicious. Yep. Yeah. I wanted to make the goat cheese one with the fig, but I I wanted to try something different because I kind of got tired of it. Yeah. Um, I caramelized the onions for that brie sandwich, that burger with uh, red onions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the re red onions with wine, the red wine. That's why it had that like really sweet kind of like, like flavor to it. I also brought you some homemade baked ziti. You, you can't that? go wrong with baked ziti. Well, do you like baked ziti better than lasagna? Like, which of the two do you think is the better, like... I think baked ziti over, like, regular lasagna, probably. Why? It's because of the ricotta cheese. It's ricotta that's in it, right? Yeah. Well, you do the I ricotta on both. I like the lasagna because the layers kind of stay separate. It's like it's ogres. Like a tiramisu. They have layers. Well, think of it like this. Like, you got the pie, right? You got a pie that has layers, but then you have a crumble, which is all mixed together. I like a good apple crumble better than, or peach crumble or cobbler better than a peach or apple pie. Mm -hmm. You know, the crust and the layers are fine, but if you're gonna put ice cream on it and make it a la mode, it just mixes and just blends better when you're eating with the spoon when it's a crumble. Mm -hmm. Same thing with a ziti. Ziti, same basic as ziti ingredients of a lasagna, but it's all mixed together. Yeah. Like a goulash, right? Okay. But with a lasagna, it keeps the layers separate. So when you bite into the lasagna, you could taste each individual layer. It's an Italian seven-layer there... dip. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> How? What? What would you dip? Well, I mean, I guess you could dip bread in there. I was just saying in terms of layers. Yeah. I'm pulling at strings here. Yeah, you are. And it's already getting to you. I'm trying not to, but you, you're you not. That's because you let most of it out on Panda Express. Yeah, I needed that. You know what I got to say? Gonna lie, you know I've been holding, I was bottling that in for days. You know what I'm I always so, say? It's better so to be pissed off right than now. pissed on. I d yes, I am so like zen right now. I, just, I really needed to let that out. <sighs> it was just eating at me. It was just rough. Overall, stuff I make, am I a good cook? I would say so. And I will continue to bring you stuff. Hopefully, hopefully this time it won't be a six-month gap, so we'll kind of remember exactly what it was. That's it was true. Good. All right, so let's get to letters. Letters is a fun part of the show. Uh, fan letters and yes. questions and answers. So I've been looking forward to this for a bit. We got some good ones yeah? in here. We got our first one here. There you go. From our good buddy Andy. Hey, what's up, Andy? Thank you. Miss you, Andy. Uh, he asked if you went out to eat and left food in the car overnight. 
would you still eat it the next day? Ooh. And I really love this one because not only is, I mean, <laughs> I I'm an, it was inspired by what you did at work. I'm an anomaly with this. And to be completely <laughs> fair, I would eat probably 95% of the food for it. But at the same time, it like depends. if I'm really going to pick and think about it, it really does. There's there's a couple factors that it, it, like that I want to bring into this question. No seafood. Can't be seafood. And it, it has to do with where your car is parked. Yes. Time is of the direct, year. Is it in direct sunlight? Is it in a shade? Time of the year. Yep. Summer, winter. I mean, winter, it might as well be in a and fridge. And is it, is it out in the open or is it yeah. completely closed there? Because like... Yeah. Is it sealed container or is it like just a styrofoam like a box. thing or box? Yeah. Pizza? I don't care. No. Eat pizza you can eat room temperature left out two, three days. Yeah. But this is the thing. It's a car. It's the same thing. It's in the car. It's the same thing. I don't care about <laughs> You the come out, the cheese is still stringy and shred and melted. It definitely won't be. Because it, it, if it's something that needs to be refrigerated and it's the winter and the car isn't heating up from being in the sun enough, then I will then put it in there. I've actually left things in the car because it's being cold. so lazy. Because it's cold. I've yeah. done the same. And walked out and brought it back in because I'm like, oh, it's going to be fine. But there are certain things like that I know if it's felt the temperature up and down too many times, yeah, it's got to go. Well, it's like beer. If beer temperature gets hot, cold, hot, cold, it skunks. Yeah. So you can't if you can't do it with beer, you can't do it with food, right? And beer has the alcohol. Well, it just depends on what it, it depends on what the right. food is. I'll throw out some stuff. First thing that comes to your head, just yes or no. Don't think Fries. about it. Don't think about it. Just yes or no. I'm gonna throw some food, some types of food out there. You tell. We're having me. a food fight. All right. Ready? Pasta. Yes. Fried rice. Yes. Unless it's like gunked together. Pizza. Well, that's a no-brainer. We already said yes to that one. Hamburger. You're thinking about it. It's supposed to be quick. I know, but the problem is that that depends on the year. You know, because I, I would finish that. No, nah, I wouldn't make it there. I'm sorry. You'd finish it before it even got... There wouldn't be left. There wouldn't be a leftover Fries. burger. Yeah, that's usually an easy one. All right. Leftover breakfast food, like an omelet or a hash. Yeah, I would do that. What about sushi? No, absolutely not. That would that like you said, that's, seafood. That's a, the seafood. That's a hard. If it's, pass. if it's an imitation crab, maybe. If it's a if it's so, a so a California roll. If it's a California roll, it should be fine. It's not really. It doesn't have any. It doesn't have anything raw. There's not a chance of it going bad. Unagi. Unagi. See, that one's that that's cooked fish, not raw fish. That's cooked uh, river eel. No, unagi is just eel. Specifically, but it's cooked. No, it's just eel. It, yes, it is, but it's a cooked. Eel. No, they, 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 they don't do it raw. Yeah, but, eel has to be cooked. Yeah. So if it's a cooked, no, it's still fish. It's still like can go bad. Yeah. It has a higher chance. Okay. Indian food, chicken masala. I probably would. Well, I mean the spiciness. Capsaicin is a natural antibacterial. The spicier the. Food. I wasn't even thinking about that. So I was that's just... what I was thinking. Even if it's like hot outside, like maybe. Most of these, for my answers, would also be more towards the fall winter type. Summer, I probably wouldn't. I'd be bringing things what in. What about spring? Spring? Well, it would. The issue when it comes to spring is depends on morning shift when or you get second to it. shift. Because if I'm getting up and I'm, it's the it's the latter half of the day, and I bring it home, and then I wake up in the morning, it's still cool enough. Yeah. I'll well, take the question it out is, of the car. The question is overnight, not oh, yeah. throughout the oh, day. Yeah, yeah. Most of the time, yeah. If okay. I, if I'm up early in the morning yeah. and it's not a midday to late day, yeah. then yes. If it's a morning, yes. Okay. Because then you don't have the fake summer vibe later in the spring. So does that change your, your vote for the sushi, knowing that it's overnight and not... No, it doesn't get cold enough. Okay. It's not going to get cold enough most right. of the time. What about a soup? Soup, I, I'd probably do most soups. Because it's just, I mean, it's soup. What about a chowder? That's dairy Probably based. not. <laughs> no. So if it's a broth, that's a yes. If it's a if it's yeah. like a cream base, that's a hell no. No, it's bisques. probably not going to look good after that and not be absolute worse. double no for a lobster bisque, clam chowder. That's seafood and dairy. No, thank you. Yeah, it's not kosher either. <laughs> All right, I think we've probably exhausted this one a bit. So yeah. let's let's move on to the next one. We got our uh, our good buddy Jose here. Get it's a pretty good one here. So he recently went to a restaurant and spent a bunch of money on a three-course meal and drinks. And at the one-hour mark, he was being asked to leave. What are your thoughts on restaurants oh, that do this? This is an interesting one. This actually happened to me on my birthday when I went to Joseph's. Yeah. So I went to Joseph's, and it was myself, my grandmother, my brother, Angelina, right? Mm. And myself. And when we went there, we didn't have a reservation. 
Yeah. So we walked up to the hostess. I was like, hey, is there any chance that you have a table available for a birthday dinner for me? And they looked around. They said, give me a minute. They went over. It's like, we have a table available, but it's reserved an hour from now. Would you be able to have your meal and be out before the reservation needs to be fulfilled? And I mm. said, yeah, hours more than enough time. We're not going to linger. We'll just come in, order our food, eat, and go. Yeah. So I knew ahead of time that they needed the It's a the very table. specific situation because they're making the accommodation for and giving me. you the hour mark beforehand. But this is a three-course meal, which already lets me know that this is a higher-end place, or it feels like it should be at that point. Any place that serves courses yeah. is going to be like... Well, that's not necessarily... You can go to, a, like, an Applebee's and have an app... Yeah, but, that, you, yeah but you're not calling that a three-course meal. If it's three courses, it's a three-course meal. When, you, when you're calling it that ahead of time without thinking about it, I feel like you're in a nicer place. But regardless of that portion of it. <laughs> Before all we know, he might have just gone to, like, Applebee's. We don't know. <laughs> but besides that, if, you, like, I'm going to proper... I, I think I feel like I'm proper in assuming this is the exact opposite situation you had yeah. when you went out there. No need... There, even if there was, a re- like, probably even if he did have a reservation or anything at this place, if it was one of the like, a restaurant that needed that. Let's he, assume, it, let's assume if it was, because I did get to talk to him in person. And if I remember correctly, he did have a reservation. Okay. And it was a fancy restaurant in Boston. Okay. But was there a policy they pre-stated beforehand? I don't to? know. So the question he's asking is, like, what's the thoughts of being asked to leave after being there for an hour? I don't. Well, I don't think that's. I don't think that's the move. I don't think. I think that's a negative piece to it because it depends. Because like a lot of time, it can take twenty ish or sometimes thirty minutes to just cook the food. Well, or if you have I it think, in I th- we're missing courses it. too. Yeah, you're going over time at this t- as well. Are we? I think we don't have enough information for this particular situation because one, how long did it take him to eat? Right. Yeah. Two out of the one hour mark. How much of it was actually eating and how much of it was they finished their meal, they had a coffee or maybe they have like a after dinner like liqueur right? yeah. or beer that they're finishing. Let's fill in all the blanks then. Up. Let's finish fill in all the blanks here to a degree because okay. I feel like we have enough to, there's not a ton of different variations you can go for. It. Yeah. Let's start with they encapsulate the whole hour with everything. Yes. But that situation... I think that's extremely rude for the restaurant to 100%. go and pull that. If they want to, if they're filling their reservations in slots exactly for it to meet the exact demand, yes. then it should be plotted in their policy. Like what Joseph did for him. me. Yeah. At least. Say, hey, we know you have a reservation, but there are other reservations that we are booked later in the night. We would kindly ask that you keep it within the one hour time frame yeah. if possible. I mean, I feel like if you're going towards like closer to like an hour and 45. Two, two hours like that's when it can like stretch on but like but if it's a really fancy restaurant in boston and they're fully booked and they have our reservations but what place has our reservations how busy is the restaurant was this during a like a, a thanksgiving or no. not thanksgiving was it like a valentine's day situation i mean i i still don't think like you should if it's a typical you should have night, this all figured out if it's a typical night super popular small intimate restaurant Every table's booked, then they should have let them know ahead of time. Yeah. It is rude. Regardless, let them know as they're coming. I feel in. like in any situation when it's unexpected, I think we'll narrow it down without yeah. even putting any factors, an unexpected timer onto it yeah. is not a good look. Yeah, no. It, now, if let's go the other side of the coin. If he was able to finish his meal in 25, even 30 minutes, yeah. and spent the last 30 minutes just chilling, yeah. Then I don't think it's outside the restaurant's realm of. It could depend on how options. they ask at that point. It's it's you gotta have some amazing tact and customer service skills to be like, how was your meal? Great. Did you enjoy any? Uh, did you enjoy anything? Anything else that I can help you with? No, we're all set. Will you be having any dessert tonight? Or if you already had dessert, is there any refills or drinks that you would like? It's like no, we're all set. We're just looking. It's like all right. And then at that point, say. Well, if it's not too much to ask, please let me know when you are ready to leave so that way I can properly prepare this table as quickly as possible for the next reservation waiting for it. You're very subtly letting them know that the table is needed for a reservation. Yeah. 
and telling them to let you know when they're ready to leave so they can quickly get the table ready for the next group. Yeah. So you're letting them know someone's waiting for the table without telling them, hey, you got to get up and leave. I feel you like, gotta be I, very, I feel like very some of those restaurants, it. so they're not booking them that strictly. Like, I feel like they're definitely layering this all much more efficiently. Like the booking, but, what do you, but what do you think about the way I position? I mean, the way you're positioning it makes more sense for it. I just think the way, the they, way he said it's like, hey, it's been an hour. Get up. It's probably how they probably, to a <laughs> yeah. degree, probably they went, which is. Would, if he took it that way, that doesn't I mean, matter if, how they said it. If the question is being asked there, then I feel like there's there was a wrong that was that had happened yeah it's less i feel like it's less on a miscommunication or anything there or like a uh i don't know but i feel like to, for it to pose the question yeah there has to be some there, there has to be a good cause for that a good reason so we both agree if there was no warning that they needed a table after an hour within an hour then it's on the restaurant's fault for not letting him know ahead of yeah time. Well, at that point, too, like when it comes to how you're setting up your sections for your yeah. waiters and waitresses and all that, and you're setting up reservations, you're not going to put ones that are immediately that close together. You're going to stagger them between sections in order to properly keep everything moving like gears yeah. in a machine. Unless it was on like a Valentine's Day, a Mother's Day, a Father's yeah, Day. Yeah, but then that's a whole, then that pre, like puts on a different question. At that point, that's a different you question. as the restaurant tour should have some type of self-awareness that this is probably the busiest night of the restaurant and there's going to be people waiting for yeah. tables. All right. So once you're done, you're done. Get out. So I think we've dug, dug a good amount of that and extrapolated for that. We have another question from our coworker, Debbie. Mm -hmm. This one goes back to when we were more around colder side of the yes. year because this question has more to do with soups okay. to start. So she says, around this time of year, nice warm soups tend to really hit the spot. Hey, even in hot weather, if you drink a soup when it's hot out, because the soup raises your internal temperature. Cools you down on the outside. Cool, yeah. Um, so it does fit. And then she continues and says, my favorite is French onion soup, especially when it's done well. <coughs> oh, hell yeah. What are your Woo! favorite kinds of soup and why? Dude, I love a good this French is, onion This soup. is a good question really well here. Um, Especially because we were talking about whether a soup could be <laughs> eaten after being left in yeah. the car. See, I'll tell you why now. One that I would do that with and one that you can get nearby. And it's one, uh, a type of soup is a hot and sour soup. Ooh. Now, hot and you sour say soup. Panda Express. I'm gonna hot, and, punch hot and sour <laughs> soup is. I feel like I've had it. It's very different. In a lot of different restaurants. Yes. I've liked it at pretty much every single one I go to. But it does have a varying taste in some places. I've had it more consistent in multiple different places, like similar. But the some um, places it's spicier than it is. My favorite hot and sour soup to have is it's it's actually not that far from here. It's like seven minutes away. Is that Dynamite Sushi in Hudson, and they make. My family's favorite hot and sour soup. Yeah? It is so good. I gotta try it. Hot and sour soup's really good. Um, and they have mushrooms egg drop in is it. Good. It's I got mushrooms it does. in there, right? It has tofu in it, too. Tofu. It has everything you'd expect. It's not... Onions, I feel like sometimes onions. when you get hot and sour soup at some places, the broth is, like, more goo gooey. Not oh like that God. it's bad. Like no. It, I don't like it when it's got, like, almost like a jelly Like a Yeah, yeah. So, like, I like that to a degree. I this like one it. doesn't have that at all. It's, I like it there's it's no, soft and There's brothy. no jello-y feel to it. It's I like, brothy? It's all brothy. It's a good... The restaurant itself is really good, but, like, the, what we, we always ordered it as takeout when we go there. So that is your thing. Your number one favorite soup. I would say that's probably one of, like, my number one favorite soup. Hot and sour. Is that hot and sour soup from Dynamite Sushi. Okay. Otherwise, I'm probably going for, like, a... Do we count a chowder as a soup in it as an yeah. overarching? Like a good clam Chowders. chowder would be in my second. You know what I hate about clam chowders for most restaurants? The fact that most of them, it's not a clam chowder. It's yeah. a potato chowder. Yeah. If your chowder that you claim is clam chowder, right, is 20% clam, 75% potato, and then 5% veggies, it's not a clam chowder. That's a also potato when it's chowder like too, with clams. When the, when the chowder is like too thin. Oh, ugh, gah. There's Ugh. too many places that like you could just casually get it. And it's just it's just too thin. It's it more to be it's creamy. like it's more like milk. Yes. It's like getting like a skim milk. No. And I've had I like skim milk, but I don't like skim chowder. <laughs> no, we're not. It's not a Rhode Island clam chowder, right? We need it to be creamy. Saying in Rhode Island, be, they have they don't have it thick. 
Well, no, in Rhode Island, they have a clear broth. Uh, we're excommunicating them right now. Sorry. <laughs> you, know, you know Manhattan clam chowder is in a tomato broth, right? You're also excommunicated, and I wish you would leave this country. <laughs> There's only one clam chowder you like, and that's the, the creamy it, white one. Right? You know what I say? It's New England and nothing. It's like Nerf, <laughs> but like, send it's clam chowder. No, I, I Please love sponsor me, Nerf. I want Dude, many Nerf guns. For me, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a definitely a chowder person. I'm torn with this question because... I either like a really good southern style shrimp and corn chowder. Well, she's only asking spicy. one of your favorite kinds of soup. She's not specifying your favorite. So you can you can pull to many multiple. I, I would say probably chowders or bisques. Like good any, lobster bisque. Yes. Oh, we do or that on cla- Christmas Eve. A crab bisque. If you've had like a really good crab bisque Mostly with like just lobster. whole craw like claw meat in yeah. it and little bits of like it's just Unbelievable. Lobster's easier to make. Yeah. But a craw, like a, uh, not crawfish, a uh, lobster, not lobster, a, a crab, like a spicy crab. He doesn't crab even bisque. know. He's had too much a pan spicy express. crab bisque. I can have a bowl of that and die happy. I do have to agree with it, though. A, a good French onion soup. Yeah. Is. Hits the spot. I thought, honestly, I think my favorite way to have it is in like a bread bowl. Yeah? A good bread bowl. Like Panera? Yeah. Well, not like, I mean, I guess the way Panera does, but like in an actual regular, like, sit-down place. Yeah, but the problem is if they do, the bread would probably be more of a size of a cup instead of That's fine. Bowl. I don't want, like, a huge piece at that point. because like, like I'm an using appetizer? That as, like, a, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, a good French, like, honestly, French onion is up there as one of my top. Because then I don't favorites. dirty a dish, and I get a nice, tasty, soggy piece of bread. Because that's, like, when the perfect section of the inside bread is, like, soggy enough. But it's soggy in the right way. And the outside is toasted. Structurally sound. Yes. All right. So let's do this. Top three soups. Or chowders. Well, soups. We're we're just going to encapsulate. Encapsulate everything. Just soups and chowders. For me, my top three ever is a spicy crab bisque. Then it's French onion soup. And then after that... It's a, a spicy southern style shrimp and corn chowder. D'Angelo's makes a phenomenal spicy shrimp and mm-hmm. corn chowder. But I've had it at a fancy restaurant. Yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I and they didn't even use shrimp, they used crawfish. So you had the crawfish tails in there yeah. and had a Creole spice to it, uh, Louisiana, like, you know, Cajun style. Oh my God. Oh, dude, if I can find that restaurant again, I don't remember where it was, I'm taking it. I think I'd probably have to put my three would be the uh, that Dynamite Sushi Hot and Sour Soup. Number one. A good New England clam chowder, like Number authentic. Two. And you know what? I think I want to throw this one in here just because I can't think of some other soups, but it's part nostalgic and part just like I feel severely underrated is a really good split pea soup. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's some good veggie soup. Like split pea soup specifically. Like the... The green, yeah. The consistency of that and all that. Like when it's just salted perfectly and all that, it just... You could put in spice, like hot sauces, like Frank's Red in it to if you feel like it. But yeah. it's it's good, like... See, I'm the type it. of person who likes it with a dollop of sour cream in it. And see, that works. There's like... You have your you have a perfect base, yeah. and you can edit it whichever way you yeah. want there. Or you know what's really good too? Now that you brought up veggie-based soups, a good sweet potato or um, pumpkin pie, a uh, pumpkin pie, a pumpkin soup, mm-hmm. a cream yeah, of yeah. pumpkin soup or a cream of sweet potato soup. That's very very good. And Those same are thing. Really good. Put a little bit of cayenne, a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of like, you know, and then just a dollop of cream yeah. cheese in the middle. Phenomenal. Do we have any other outside of the ones on our prompter here? Yes, we actually do. We, we have, have a couple more questions. All right, so we got a couple more questions here, the last two. Yep. And they kind of have somewhat synergy with them. I'd say they have yeah. synergy with them. Yeah, we're going we're gonna, we're gonna to paraphrase um, one of them because it's a little long. So we're going to start with um, Taj. Taj's question. Oh, yeah. Taj. It's all about. What is it, you said favorite texture of chip? What kind of chip is like the 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 best? The t- what kind of chip is the best texture? Yes, yes. like uh, is kettle, it kettle, classic like Lay's style or Uts, wavy, um, wavy or like wavy ruffles, or rip, like ripple. ruffles. That, it was called ripple. I thought it was ruffles. Ruffles is a brand, but it's or okay. It's a, wave, it's a wavy or ripple Not, chip or potato sticks, like the ones that you get in a can, like yeah. the camp sticks. You get in a ones. can, you can get it in a bag, you can get so, all that stuff. In my opinion. It comes. It really comes down to what you're eating it with. Yeah. Like if I'm gonna have a chili cheese dog, for example, 
right? And I'm gonna have like a hot dog on a toasted bun and it's I feel like you get a whole top, you get a whole side cheese. of kettled chips. But see, that's if you're eating it as a side. Yeah. I would get the potato sticks and just crumble it on top of the hot dog. Yeah, but they that's not that's not the way you go for it. That's but not that's how, how I would use the but potato sticks. But they don't put potato sticks with hot dogs. Or talk about soups earlier, right? I would put potato sticks in a soup. I mean, that makes sense because it's more like a cracker that side. I feel like I would probably remove potato sticks out of this entire equation because it's not a chip. It's its own kind of unique form to snack. It's like going, it's smaller. It's You're eating it in bunches. It's, yeah, but you can still eat it out of the can. You can. Well, yeah, that's how you eat it. But... <laughs> But <laughs> you eat it by itself. It doesn't have to go so. It is still a. You know what? I six, I wouldn't. No. It's you see. But I'm, here's I'm the pushing. thing: is it's it, it's we're talking about chip. I'm pushing. What's, wait, wait, no, 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 no. What's the second piece of that after potato? Okay. Huh? Hold on. Huh? Answer. No. Answer. Let me, let me. Answer. I, answer. I, I don't answer. Know what's the answer. What's the answer? It's a stick. Okay. Not let a me, chip. All right. Let me ask you this. In England. All right, table no, slapper. No, 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 no. no, we're gonna. Well, you're gonna. Okay. Here's how I'm gonna push back. Right. There's no pushback. It's sorry. Potato sticks are nothing more than a poor man's version of fries. It's They're pre-made crunchy potato fries, right? What do you call How fries in England? What do you call thing. fries in England? What are fries in Mistakes. England? Mistakes. No, what's the name? What do they We don't we don't fish, acknowledge Fish it. and what? We don't acknowledge Fish them. and what? Chips. Yeah, just cuz they call so, it doesn't mean they're right. If they're shaped <laughs> like a stick and made of potatoes, your argument's already invalid. And crunchy, I don't know if you know they this. They count as chips. I don't know if you know this, but we're in the U.S. and that is irrelevant. <laughs> don't acknowledge it. Also, I think high key, most British food. <laughs> we're not going there right now. Anyway, <laughs> best texture for it. I, right, so, I feel like I feel like it can also lean more sometimes to brand. Yeah, and sometimes 100%. to how you want it because like sometimes i'll go in and i look at the vending machines or like go to the store and i go i want it like a regular like i'm craving that regular classic Lace. chip style versus like sometimes maybe i want a harder crunch and i want the kettle and then other times hey, it's God. like i want the ripple ones because some they salt those ruffles. ones in a slight different way and it's like a mixture well ruffles is not the default it, for, for wavy? wavy no yeah it is no it's not what is it then it doesn't matter it's just wavy. It, I'm just talking brand, brands in general. But I'm just saying that normally... You're he's, brand dropping. He's not sponsored. Wait, he's, <laughs> I'm just using examples. Like You're, you're, using, right. you're using All examples, chips are but not everybody, knows, everybody knows all these chips. Lays, we're not going brands. We're Lays not, and Uts. We're, we're pulling brand away from this, because if you bring brand... But they matter, though. They they matter when you get more specific. We're on a base level. You get it? We're taking okay, a step so back. Okay, so if we're going just no brands, because again, if we're going... Regular basic potato Read between chips. the lines, Theo. Butts and Lay's arguably make the same style chip, but I'll take a Lay's over Utz any day. Utz is... We're not going into brands. We're going into texture. But I'm just saying, as an example we're, of a stuff. I know, but Vicky's, we're going We're going into... You're going too deep. Take, no, it, no, take deep. it back. Take it back. Stop slapping the table. Okay, take it back. So we're going... We're going, we're going to have a bunch of table slaps in this so mic. You tell them to stop slapping that table. Just, Use his hands in the air. in my arm. Did I lean against something down here that had paint? No, you painted yourself. All right. Um, we're if, not. We're not going to okay, brands. No brands. Take the brands out. Brands don't matter. You got to think was, broadly. If I'm at a restaurant, like th imagine it in your ideal version of each one. That just that that's baseline. That's where you are. That's where we're sticking the question. I'm at a restaurant. You're, you're ide no, no, don't no, no, no. I'm like I'm like just I'm thinking. I'm at a restaurant. I order myself the best Reuben sandwich I'll ever have in my life. And on the side of the plate is a pickle spear and a potato chips. A whole bunch of kettle cooked chips. Well, don't say the type. It's potato chips. That's what, what I imagine. What do I picture? What is it that I have? Well, I pictured that. You picture kettle? If it's at a sit-down place like that, usually, yeah. And that's what you think is the best of the, of the different no. Sh shapes? No, I don't. But Because it, it, it's situational, like, where, what you're having with it. Well, the, the I whole think... point is that you could have anything with a side of, with a Reuben. A Reuben... You're there for the Reuben, so the chip doesn't matter. It's complimentary. Now, exactly. if, I, if I'm just having the chips themselves, it also I, I feel like it's where we need to take the question back to. Because it's just a chip. You're not bringing it in with anything else. You're, you love to bring complexity. As a side. You, love to, it as you a side. love to bring complexity into simplified situations. If, I'm gonna, if someone says, what do you want for a chip? And just tosses me a bag, what do I imagine them tossing have, me? It's like having it for lunch. Like you had a sandwich and you're going to have a bag of chips. It's you just said no sandwiches. Yeah, but that's different because it's you're t you're trying to bring in it as complimentary. I'm talking about like you're having this to eat or eating as a snack. Like you're going to a party and you're only having chips. I'm going wavy. 
I think wavy's the way to it's go. It's probably because you have a good French onion dip nearby. No, I like wavy. And the reason why I like wavy is because it has those waves is a consistent textual crunch that you can't get with any other type of chip. Even kettle, which is known for its super strong crunch, that that's only That's the one happens, that hurts the top of the roof of your mouth. But that's, yes. But that one, you only get that crunch when they fold in on themselves. And yeah. not all of them are. I mean, it's good. It's inconsistent. But I feel like your best integrity of a chip and like... Wavy. Munch is the wavy. I'm gonna have to agree. I think a good, like a good ideal wavy chip, is my favorite texture chip. And Cape Cod makes wavy. Well, I don't care about the brand. You're going back to brand. You're doing. <laughs> you need, We're not sponsored. Like I said, you're bringing complexity into a simplified situation. I think wavy is the best type of chip. Wavy, wavy's consistent. It's crunchy, and like you said, they're good for dipping. Now, it's, for a good segue here. My, that's. I think it's also the best chip to dip is the wavy chips. Like if you put dip down, you're using like. And you're specifically just potato chip because this could go with tortilla chips. Is this a question from an things. email? Yeah, it's going to be. I'm, I'm leaning into oh, it. Okay. This is me just going off of it to point A to point B, and I'm going to bring in the point A1 in okay. a second. But if you sit down and you have, a, you have a dip and you're having a potato chip, I feel like nine times out of ten, it's a, wa- it's a, it's a wavy chip. It's the only one that's strong enough to, stand, to withstand most dips. The structural integrity of the waves... Because and that the- leads into the texture of yes. it being best. Yeah, it is. So bringing into the dip side of it here, we also have a good question that leans, uh, lines up with this from Capone. And he's asking how you dip your chip. Do you just dip it or dunk it? Or do you scoop? Yeah, you're right. And then I'm going to add this piece to it because it's also I another think that's a important... that's a good way of putting it. Dunk a, or scoop? There's another important piece to it. Yeah. No, it's dunk or dip. No, dunk or scoop. Dunk, dunk goes in and out, dip, dunk, uh, scoop, you, you scoop. But there's another piece to it there, and it's more of what kind of dips you have. Yeah, it, the, what it is matters. For me... Shout and out to g- Capone, thanks for the dip question. That's for me, good I'm going to bring some complexity in this because now there's allowed to be in... How convenient. Well, you. this makes more sense now. Um, <laughs> sometimes I like to... This is like a personal thing. I don't, I don't know if it applies Yo, to everybody. I'm taking it personal. Don't no, worry. no. But uh, <laughs> I feel like sometimes, depending on how many chips and how much dip there are, yeah. will sometimes the dip chip dictate ratio. how much I'm willing to... If I'm going to dip it in or if I'm going to... Dunk it. If I'm going to dunk or if I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dunk it or I'm going to scoop it. Most of the time, I feel like I scoop regardless of some amount, like small with like small amounts. But sometimes I I dunk like I'll I'll scoop it for way more. Okay. But it also depends sometimes on the amount of, like the size of the chip. Well, it depends on the on the, the vessel. We already agreed. Wait, wavy is a way to go. Well, it's either, I mean, it's, it it's either that or you do a tortilla chip because a tortilla chip tortilla is just a corn rough uh, a corn kettle chip. Yeah, I mean that's that's I feel is a proper neutral vessel for most dips. No, I'm yeah. sorry for a I lot of dips. For I a lot of dips. I wouldn't yeah. use a corn tortilla and hummus. Well, I didn't say... I said for most. You're naming one of the ones that aren't on the list. Tzatziki. I would do it on there. No. Yeah. You don't do tzatziki for corn. It doesn't matter. Potato chips work you're, See, tzatziki. you're bringing complexity in a simple situation spinach again. Spinach dip. That yes. doesn't... No, you spinach don't use dip? I've done it in a spinach no. dip. It's fine. It's totally fine. Potato there's no, chip if there's works no, better for a spinach if there's no, no. The, the, the tortilla's fine. If there's no pita chip there, I'm doing it with a tortilla chip. Anyway. Besides dip your... Or scoop. Besides your ability... I said it depends. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to lay myself on this line. I think a majority of the time, I'm going to be scooping. I think it comes down to not so much the vessel, but the viscosity of what you're dipping it into. Most of the time, I think you can still scoop. Even if it's scoop, the viscosity will prevent you from actually scooping, and you will just inevitably just end well, up making then it's, it a long it's too, it's too goopy. I'll give you an example. All right. So hummus, scoop. doesn't matter the vessel. Spinach dip, you scoop. Salsa, um, you're scooping that. Salsa, that's what we get. You're from. scooping it. You're, no, no, that one's a specific one. You're definitely not dipping that because you're not getting anything on that after that. You're getting just. But see, the, that's the thing. You're getting like the Depends entrails, the remains. On the salsa. If it's a watery salsa, you're not, where they blend the vegetables. You're then using, whether you scoop or you dunk, if it's a flat tortilla chip, you're, you're using, not getting you're using anything. A, you're, you've, at that point, you, you either have a scoopable chip. Like the uh, Tostitos scoops, yeah. 
Yes. Or you're 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 having a mistake because you brought the wrong salsa to the party. <laughs> but you go to a restaurant, some of them make them from scratch and they do blend yeah. the, the But they things. still those so, still scoop to a degree. At that point actually it's more dip. Even more than, than no no, even more than dunk, I will still scoop. scoop. I won't dunk it. Okay. No, you're making because you're missing so much you're well, missing a majority of oh, that at that point. It but, falls off. But I'm telling but the point is but that's you what can I'm trying still to say. Dunk it. But that's you can dunk, but it's gonna still end up the same as a dunk. That's what I'm saying. But it's not going to scoop. The, the, no, sauce the, the is dunk viscosity. is not the same as the scoop. The process is different, but you get, you're going to get you, with the no, same you're not, end result. You're not getting the same end result. Yeah, okay, you not know what? I'm, I'm using the salsa as a segue to kind of tell you how there's different degrees. Well, I know there's different Hummus degrees, but salsa thick, specifically. Then you go to creamy dips like onion and spinach and tzatziki. Then you go into salsa, which can be chunky or watery sometimes. If it's too watery, then you made that salsa wrong, and it's supposed to be in something. Not queso dip. To put on a something. Queso dip. Even if you scoop, it's gonna be a dunk it because is. it's gonna coat. It is. It's gonna coat whatever you put in it. It's that's not gonna, that's it's just not that's just there to coat. All right, and then and that's where I lead now to the end. Nuggies. Any sauce you dip a nuggy in is a dunk. Doesn't matter if you try to. You're scoop, not. You're it's not. A dunk. You're not scooping a nugget. You're dunking it regardless. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So it um, it all comes down to the viscosity of well, what you're Well, at that point, it that's a sauce, though. You're dipping it into a sauce. Okay, so at what point do you say it's well, a sauce? Well, because we're talking about dips. Is it a sauce or is it or, a dip? It's a sauce. Okay. Lost in the sauce. It's under the sauce. <laughs> you lost Where's the, the toppings? It's okay. under the sauce. So salsa, dip or sauce? It's a dip. When you put it in a burrito? It's still technically <laughs> a salsa. It's a, when you pour it on a taco. It's a salsa. Sauce or dip? Well, I wouldn't view it as a sauce. I view it as a topping. What kind of topping? A salsa topping. <laughs> salsa literally means sauce. That's fine. It's salsa means sauce in Spanish. It's a sauce. But you were telling me you can scoop it. You can. But you just said you can't with a nugget. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I think I don't when I, mean, I think a sauce for for like for dipping I mean there's a dip then you go into a dipping sauce and then a topping sauce. Sauce is sauce. We're bringing no no sauce no, no, is no, no, sauce. No, no. It doesn't no, no. matter what you It you're does. Using. No it does because there are specific sauces made for dipping and there's specific sauces made for topping. Okay. All right. I'll 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 concede you're correct on that end. But to answer the question Cuz if you were to argue that on me you'd have you to dip, you'd have to eat a whole thing of if, Panda if Express. The, so to answer your question, Capone, do we dip or in this case dunk? Or Ninety percent of the time, I'm scooping. Yeah, I, I agree. I'm a scooper as well. Even if it doesn't scoop, I'm probably still scooping it. It's just muscle memory at that point. I feel like, you and you know what? Well, when you're at the end of the sauce for a nugget, and you got like the sweet and sour, and you're just trying to get that nook and cranny, I feel like this is more, le this is more, this is more leading to this is leading to chips. You don't scoop. You can't scoop with a nugget. You're not scooping with those. This is a chip question. Okay, well, same. You're thing. bringing complexity into I, a simplified I, situation. I, other than salsa, couldn't be bothered. Other than salsas and quesos, if it's, I, I'm still scooping us. I'm still scooping queso because sometimes if you're fast enough, you can keep it all on there and get it in your mouth before it dribbles off. Before yeah. it, before any of it falls off, you're Again, getting. You it's get a it viscosity there. question. I will scoop. Most people like you and I will scoop, but in certain cases, even if you try to, you're stuck with a dunk. Yeah. Dunkaroos, right. scoop or dunk? Well, dunk's in the name, so I mean, I'm scooping it because it's frosting, but but it's the the viscosity, right? You dunk it in, it's gonna stick to it. Yeah, when you well, that's pull it that's out. that's different. That's not even a dip. That's just frosting. That's an entire question for another day. All right, is there anything else we need to talk about? Is there any other emails or questions? I think those two segue together were probably a good finisher there. All right, cool. So I think we're I'm gonna have to you close us out, Peter. I think we're good to end there. If you guys want to get in contact with us, you can always just message us on any of the socials we have. You can go to our Facebook group. You can follow us everywhere. Everywhere. Ev yeah. Everywhere. Everywhere. Like Word. YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, previously Twitter, now X. We also want to thank PJ and Johnny for helping us moderate on the social medias with some of the background producing. Johnny made a new intro as well. Look the video to into that. it, so that's going to look uh, good on the videos. There, or is it uh, coming up? It's coming up. New videos coming up soon. Yes, yeah, so make sure you peep that. And we're also going to make sure that thank Julio Cercado, who was the one that did the intro music and the outro music. So thank him as well. And we want to also thank all of you lovely listeners. 
Thanks for listening and tuning in on your favorite podcast player. And make sure you try Panda Express. Don't.